you're watching the top six show the original multi-club fan channel make sure you're following us now on spotify and apple podcast the link is in the description below Welcome back to the Top 6 Show. It's Thursday night. We've got a brilliant panel for you with man like Tom Little. I'm glad he's put an at on to cover up that barnet of his, I tell ya. <laughs> We've got Dio in the house. CB is back with us. We've got Blue Studio in the house. Man like LB is here as well. And George and Rory Talks Football will be on the show later. So stay with us. Hit like buttons. Make sure you are subscribing to the Football Terrace if you haven't done so already yet. But how is everyone? Everyone well? Everyone good? Everyone enjoying the little break from football? Or, or is it tough? Is it no, tough? I ain't enjoying it. This is <laughs> dead, man. We need news. We need news, isn't it? Where's the fucking news, man? <laughs> Where are the games? Where are the games? Like they start I soon. Mean, they, they start today or tomorrow, don't they? The games. You, you know, my weekend, my weekends are terrible because the games are like 6 a.m. here in the US. So I wake up at about 5.30 in the morning to get ready to start watching all the games. And so now Saturday days, my body is used to waking up at 5.30. Like this weekend, I'm going to wake up early and there's nothing. Nothing, my I mean, like, just, yeah. I'm all for the break. We needed the break. Came at the right time for us. So I, I, if they want to make it three, four weeks, I've got no complaints. <laughs> ah. Lots to go through today, though. I think there's some really good talking points. Some of it's been uh, sort of the agenda has been created by the, the viewers that have tweeted in today with some stuff about the title race, England's best 11, where Spurs may finish. Um, we will be looking at the situation with, with Chelsea, which just seems to get bigger and bigger each day. LB and I had discussed it Tuesday on Straight Facts, and now there's a court case that's going to be showing some more evidence their fans have released some really interesting artwork depicting their, their board as clowns as per our own thumb now today as well. Chelsea are up in their ticket prices, which has infuriated their supporters and have come back with some really weird, we have to do this to stay competitive with our rivals, which means they're losing a lot of money. Um, and of course, we know the warning signs that have gone out. The likes of Chelsea and City could be kicked out of the Premier League if found guilty of FFP. So we're touching on that. But I wanted to start today. <laughs> Somebody tagged me in this earlier. And I know a lot of Man United fans might be triggered by the thumb now. But supposedly, Spurs fans are having online debates about whether or not they should take Kobe Mainu from Man United. And I thought for a little bit of fun, we could ask the question today. Does anyone think Spurs have got a chance of taking Kobe Manu away from Man United? I oh, because Spurs fans are discussing it online. I thought I thought throw it out to you guys. You know what's I, I about that? The world. I would love the world where Tottenham beat. Let's bear in mind if Kobe Manu was available on the market, Tottenham would not be the only club in for Kobe Manu. So if he was available, they would. It wouldn't just be Tottenham against a a Brentford or a Burnley. It would be Tottenham <laughs> against an Arsenal. A Liverpool, a Real Madrid, a, a, a PSG, a Bayern. I want to go that. Yeah, yeah. But Tottenham are not winning any races for any trip. It's crazy. No, but that's, but that, that's 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 the truth. They're like, I know you're going to say you won't go as far as Real Madrid and all these guys, but they're looking at the future too. Like that would that's a that's a solid buy. Like you have Kobe Mainu on your bench, bro. You know, in terms you of know, Real Madrid, they're, they're they're set for the future. They got Chumani, they got Kamavinga, they got Jude. Yeah. They're in full situation sorted for at least someone could come for them as well in the future in like a couple of years. So now they have Mane who can just pop in as well. You you always have to think about it from that aspect. Those players, you know, well, right now they're sorted for the future. You're right. Hey, but, you, know you know what I love about that tweet? Know. Yeah, you know what I love about that tweet is how it's like, would you take Kobe Mainu at Tottenham? Like, what are you what are you waffling about? Would you take him? Would you take? Of course, him? <laughs> of course you're gonna take him at Tottenham. We've chatted about man. I take him at City, so of course you're going to take him at Spurs. Like, what is that? What is that question, bro? They, they phrased it like someone's going to go. No, you know, skip. He gets Tottenham. He's better than Manu. We need to keep Ollie skip. Don't don't we don't need the Manu of any type. Look, honestly, if, if, if Kobe Manu goes to Tottenham, he starts today. Like, if he goes, he, he literally I starts today. I genuinely mean this. I, I think he starts for most teams in the Premier League, barring City. Even with even with Arsenal, Arsenal's a tough one, but you don't really have a, a midfield partner for, for Rice. Trossard drops in there and have Arts does it a little bit. I think he could get in the Arsenal team. The only team I think he again, I even say with, with City, Kovacic and Nunes are not exactly ripping up trees. Like he'd he'd be getting a lot of game time at Manchester City, in my opinion. He's that good, and you know he's that good. 
because he's got in the England team. And I'm sorry to call your lot out, Tom, but the amount of stuff I'm seeing today, like compilations of, uh, is it Cech? I can't remember his name now. He ain't played for oh, all I, season. I, 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 I'm <laughs> seeing like uh, uh, Jones prop everywhere. There's Pete, there's Liverpool and Spurs and Arsenal fans releasing. Well, his, his stats aren't particularly good. I'm like, have you watched Maynou play? This guy is legit. He's got a long way to go, a lot to develop. But I just, when I saw this tweet, I normally ignore this stuff. But I just thought to myself, the audacity to ask a question, LB, as you put it, the audacity to say, would you what? take him? Of course you would. Of course you would. It's, it's, like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> It's ridiculous. I don't know why. I don't know why why that question was asked in that in that way. Um, well, would you take him? But yeah, it, it, it's crazy. I mean, we do need to have a conversation about Manu in terms of what what did he do in terms of in terms of his long term future? Because United have ruined quite a lot of players. You know, I'm not just saying that as a City fan. I think we all agree on that. You know, I mean, Rashford, for example. I know part of it's probably down to himself and the way he's conducted himself, but there's no. There's no doubt in my mind that the culture at Manchester United and the way that these players, are, you know, are handled, um, you know, contributes to the downfall. So Colby Mine, you need to be very careful. Uh, and, you know, I'm saying this because I kind of, I'd love to have him at City, but you need to be very careful about his next, his next move. You know what I mean? And, and the board need to convince him that this is the right place to be. Because, listen, you know, you can have all the talent in the world, right? But if you're not in the right environment, you've not got the right culture in your team, you will eventually go down the same path as everybody else. Paul Pogba, for example, yeah, this guy, did he flop at United? Okay, some people say he did, some people say he didn't. He, he's certainly massively underachieved. Is Paul Pogba a good player? Of course he is. So why did he underachieve at Manchester United? The, the culture at Manchester United is toxic. You know what I mean? It's so, so toxic. And that that can rub off on, 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 on people around you. So he needs to be very careful, man. Because And I say this from a, play, a fan that would love to have him at City, but also an England, an England fan. England fan, I'd love to, you know, we need to make sure that this guy doesn't go down that toxic road and, and fall into the negativity trap and et cetera, et cetera. He needs to be coached by a good manager because he's a good player. So I don't know what he's going to do. I don't yeah, know whether so he's going to sign a new let deal me, or whatever. I'll be, I'll be, let me say this, right? I think we can give them the benefit of the doubt. They've got new management that has come in and they're making moves. So I, I want to strongly believe that if we're talking about Manu of like two, three years ago, I would be like, get Kobe out of there because they're going to ruin him. But with the new management, let's see what happens. You know what I'm saying? Like, you never know. Yeah, the, it's not season... necessarily about them, no, 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 it's I'm, about the players, isn't it? It's that's what I'm saying. I'm saying, with, I'm, saying with the new, I'm saying with the new management, let's see what happens. In the, the season is almost coming to an end. They're bringing a new coach, sell out a bunch of players, change the orientation, do whatever they need to do. You know, I think um, it's fair to say, let's see what they'll do with uh, Sir Jim. Yeah, but, but uh, right that, now, that's, so. a, that's a long process. I, I, United has to understand that's, that's going to be a that's long a, process. Th th this is. isn't going to be a, a one-year, one-and-done thing. Yeah, it's gonna it's take a, three, four, maybe even five years, and in that time, it's gonna take three to five no, years. In, in that time, every Sorry. it's not like every other club stagnates and just goes. Let's wait for United to sort them no, themselves. No, so I, I, I think there's two separate football. things here. It might take us five years to genuinely be good enough to compete every year to challenge for a Premier League title. You can fix the culture and behaviours at a football club, in a school, in a family, mm. in a business very very quickly indeed with right. the right people running it and and that's just through my own experience in sport competing for team gb my own experience in business working at a fairly high level uh, you know with within banking i've seen teams that have been absolutely horrendous with terrible people in it, it takes the right leadership to come in a few it's casualties a few new, a few new faces and cultures can change and it's about the, the attitude and behaviors and i think i think that sir jim and co We'll get that change. It's why I don't believe. It's why I don't trust all these Southgate rumors. I, I just don't. I, I just to say is it's Southgate the right leadership? Is that what you mean? Well, the thing with this is, well, I'll say this. What I'll say about Southgate is this: the one thing, whether you like Southgate as England manager or not, the England culture is good. It's the best England culture we've had in our lifetime. So, I don't like Southgate as a manager from the perspective of us being good enough to win football. But do I look at him as somebody that would be able to get players on side and make sure people are working in the right direction and doing the right things? As a general rule, yes. You could put on the Ben White situation and say, well, there have been problems. But all clubs have problems, problems. even the very yeah. best. So nowhere's perfect. You can argue but it's... that um, Shaw and Maguire played their best football under him as well. Yeah, th th there is that. I, I, look, I look at the, the Southgate story as uh, it's not one that I'm completely ignoring 100%. It's, it all comes from the Daily Star, so I'm taking it with a little bit of a pinch of salt. But with the Southgate situation, I believe he's on a list. 
I believe he might be something, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth on the list. Because if we don't land our main targets and Ten Hag does have to go, there does come a point where you might have to turn to somebody like him. If we're really as far gone as everybody tells us we are, and nobody wants to manage us. As whenever we've spoken, when Man United fans speak of Inzaghi and Simeone and Alonso, everybody says, no chance, I won't come to you. Then you start mentioning the managers lower down. They go, oh my God, that's embarrassing. Well, it is to a degree, but if the managers we want are not interested, because you say we've fallen, then maybe that's where we have to um, sort of start from. Do, yeah. Start from potentially. I don't want Southgate. That's not my personal choice, but I still think you can fix the culture at the club in terms of, the, the the attitude and the behavior and a lot of that stemmed from things like the stadium a lot of it stems from the training facilities and i remember listening to sean longstaff speak about how at newcastle a lot of people are still not aware of this up until the saudis got involved all clubs have ice baths right and like really good facilities to like have ice baths these guys had 1099 paddling pools from argos outside filled with water and ice cubes for their ice baths so you imagine you sign for the club, 20 million pound. Oh, we've got this big plan. You're like, oh, great. You're used to playing at a club in Italy with great facilities. You go to Newcastle. It's a little bit of a culture shock up there anyway. You go to training, you finish, you go for the ice baths and they pull out these paddling pools for kids. That sends a message, in my opinion, to you that this ain't a serious football club. Man United, mm-hmm. similar. Leaking roof, piss all over the toilets, training facilities from the 1980s it sends a message that they're not serious. So I think a lot of the cultural issues will be resolved by the investment that the ownership are making and the standards that they're putting in place as an example. So yeah, look, I I think from my point of view, I'm actually not that I I get where you're coming from LB because I said it about four or five years ago about Rashford, Martial and, and I know we don't play around for us anymore. uh, Mason, uh, Mason, uh, Mason Greenwood. And it was very much, if the club don't fix itself in three or four years, I want to see these players leave because this club will drag them down. And Greenwood's situation is highly different. But the other two, in my opinion, have been dragged down by the club. Martial should have got himself out in 2016, 2017, and gone somewhere else. Rashford probably should have left before doing this new deal. It might now turn around with the new ownership. But no, I do I do agree. I love young Maynu. I am worried about his long-term future at Man United if we don't fix our problems. It will burn him as well because he's burned every other motherfucker. Why yeah, would you, know what, you know what as well, Terry, right? you're, you're right. And this is where I think maybe, I, I don't know if I explained it correctly to Tom, but the culture can change very quickly. Yes, it might take three to five years to be challenging for a Premier League, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the toxicity that, that, that lives inside that Manchester United dressing room. And that can be sorted out football-wise. Obviously, you've got two transfer windows a, a, a season. That could be, in my opinion, that should be sorted out within 18 months. Three transfer windows. Yeah. If you've still not got rid of that, then whoever's dealing with the, the players is is a, is a serious problem. So, I don't know, man. We'll have to see how it gets on. But, it, you know, it, I think as well it comes down, and I think we've had, a, we've had a chat about this in the past, Terry, about the fact that United this summer are going to have to be ruthless and they're going to have to look at players and go, we're not just judging the players on talent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're judging the players on like who wants to be here, who's gonna fight for the badge, you know, when, when things are going tough. Because I think we all accept, and United fans need to accept this. And if you don't, then you've got a problem that it's not gonna be smooth sailing now. You've got this new guy in, yeah, it's gonna be ups and downs, and you need players to fight for the badge. So, you know, for for example, Bruno Fernandez, I I I'd be seriously considering if you don't want to get rid of him, you've got to get rid of the captain's armband off him because he's a terrible captain. Um, there's other players you just mentioned then, Terry, Rashford, Martial, that you've got to have a conversation about as well. But, you know, there are difficult difficult decisions and it's whether or not they've got the minerals to, to, to make I mean, Arsenal, Arsenal is a good recent example if you look at it. The first thing that uh, Mikel Ateta did in the first six months to a year, the first 18 months was people like Abuma Yang and all these guys with attitude, Gwenduzi and all these players who were just, you know, were the lords of the of the dressing room. He got rid of them. And everybody was complaining. Who are you going to replace them with? Who are you going to replace them with? First thing is first, you got to stamp down the authority. Like, these are the people in charge. You know, the Cronkies did that. Arteta did that. They brought AD in. They stamped the authority. One charge. This is how we want the club run. This is the idea. If you don't want to play for the club, we don't want you here. We'd rather have somebody who wants to play for the club, take mm-hmm. their raw talent and develop it. Put money on you and develop you as quickly as we can, rather than go for the big names that are going to come in there with an attitude. Mm-hmm. And... In four years now, in, in four years, two two out of those four years, we were challenged for the title. Yeah, we bottled the last season, but challenged for the title in two out of those four years. But so if you look at it, that's 
if you if you look at it, that's a fifty percent return in my mind as regards to challenging for the title. But it took Dio, about two years to clean up argue. and two years to you know. So you could also argue though, um, Arteta gotten out the winners in the team, i.e. the Aubameyangs, you know, the all the experienced players. They're yet to win a trophy with this new model, with this this idea of all these young players that he's brought in. So you could say, yeah, but this new, but this new, but this new young player that's challenged, second, this is the second year running. Whoever's right, that bell ringing, because someone mute whatever they, whatever, yeah, whoever's yeah. their phone or whatever they've got an app open, can you yeah. shut that down for us, just because. Yeah, bear with me, my bad. So. No worries, my man. I, this, I hear this, it. This new, this new kids are basically a challenger for the second time running back to back after clearing out all the old school stuff. The old school guys didn't even didn't even challenge for the title. They were they were running fifth, fourth, eighth, like that's where we were. So. After clearing out the back room, changing the culture, setting setting the goal, writing the vision clear so that people can run with it, and everybody knows exactly. Recruitment knows what they're doing. Management knows what they're doing. Doctors know what they're doing. Bringing in the right people to help with set pieces. They're like, look, you're building a solid foundation first. Then you can go challenge for the title. Mm. Yeah. Now, I, I listen. I I, I understand. It's just really funny. A lot of people. A lot of people. When well, people say they got the winners, there wasn't really any winners at Arsenal. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, they won. They won the FA Cup, and that was an excellent achievement for them in that particular season. But I think the big clubs are judged on their. You are ultimately judged on your league performance as well. I know that winning trophies is what it's all about, but I've seen I've seen in my lifetime teams win the FA Cup and then get relegated in the same season. It doesn't make it a successful season overall. You want to be winning those FA Cups. You want to be winning the League Cups, but you want to be challenging. But you want to be able to challenge for the Premier League. And as much as I wouldn't want to ever turn down a trophy, if you're challenging for the Premier League regularly, I believe you, you as a general rule, have a better and more consistent chance of winning those domestic Cups and European trophies as well. Because if you're challenging to win the Premier League year in, year out, I think that makes you one of the best teams in Europe because it's one of the hardest leagues in Europe. And I would much rather be in that space as a, as a club than anywhere between second and, and eighth, never in a title race, but picking up the occasional trophy. Because I think over a 10-year period, the teams that are... Cons if you look at the two teams in England in the last decade that have consistently challenged for the league the most, they're also the two teams that have won the most big trophies. So for me, that's where you've got to aim to get to. So I agree just, to an extent. When it's all said and done, you know, when their careers are over, you're not they're not sitting back and saying, "Remember that time we finished third in the league?" They're talking about, oh, "Yeah, I remember when we won the FA Cup. Oh, I remember when we won the Carabao." You know no, I, I understand that. I, I I do understand that, and that's where the, 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 there is a risk to it. But at the same time, do do you would you look at Arsenal now as a, when you if you were to play Arsenal now as a Chelsea fan, would you rather play this Arsenal team or the one from three years ago, four years ago? It's still Arsenal to me. Until Arsenal win anything, I always look at Arsenal as little bros. Even now, we're in the worst situation than them. I back myself. I think we're ending their season when we play against them. We ain't, they ain't rescheduled the dates yet fully. But when we go to the Emirates, I think we end their season. But I don't look at Arsenal like, oh, shiver my timbers. Oh, I don't. They're, they're not that because they're not winning trophies. The reason why I respect a, a Liverpool is because you guys have landed the minerals. You won a trophy against us. So I respect a, Man a Manchester City who was having this debate yesterday. Oh, I think so so let me ask you this question. So you're more fearful of Man United right now because you won a trophy last year compared to Arsenal by your based on your logic. Yes. And it's not really just because of winning the trophy. It's in your DNA. You guys are winners but in your DNA. That's why it is for me. It, it, you know, it could be a hot take, but that's just for me. You guys are so, winning. So, so, CB, so CB, you're saying that um, winners are, de are determined by the trophy, the amount of trophies that you have, right? Basically. No, I would, it's just, no, 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 I mean, like, it, it has, it has to be by, it, no, no, it has to be by the amount of trophies, no, no, hold on, hold on, no, I'm not, no, I'm asking, it does have to be by the amount of trophies you have, because it's not about how recently you won it, if it's about how recently, then, then Manchester United won a trophy last season, there should be, like, you know, that, they, they, we should just make sure, like, yo, put them up there right now, like, so, so if Manchester it's got, United it's got, no, no, but it's, season and also so, last year. so CB, so CB, so it's got to be about the amount of winnings that you have as trophies, so if we sit down, and we say, okay, little bros, big bros, in total, I'm little bro to Manchester United, right? And Liverpool, in number of trophies I have overall, total. I'm not but talking to... I'm, I'm, listen, I'm not... No, no, now you, be, now, now you want to be specific. I'm not talking about... We open my cabinet, we open your cabinet, we count the trophies. History, we remember the first top three teams with the most trophies as Man U, Liverpool, and Arsenal. It's Manchester City. Oh, yeah, it's Arsenal. No, 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 no. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. They, 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 they haven't caught up yet. 
So, so, next, so there you go. Next year, yeah, yeah. So hold soon, on. So, so there you go. It's income. <laughs> so there you go. It's, it's it might be incoming there next year. They might catch up. But what I'm saying is, if you're just saying recent wins, then that doesn't. You can't just. Well, five recent yeah. wins. Let, let yeah. me correct myself. You guys, if you was to look at our trophy trophy cabinet, the Liverpools, the United, the seat, even City now sit on our table because we have won it all. That's why we sing, we've won it all. There's certain things, there's certain chants that you guys are not allowed to sing, i.e. champions of Europe, all of this. That's missing from your cabinet. We have co completed the whole collection. Okay, so so, the, so, so hold on. You've completed right. the collection of the ch recent Champions League. What about the, the other European Champions League uh, championships that were happening back in the day that Arsenal won two of, that you haven't won? What, we won what it, did we say? Hold on, hold on. No, no, you've, you've won the champ. You've won, you've won the cup winners' cup. You haven't won the you haven't you haven't won the Europa Fairs Cup though. So do we then turn around and say, well, you haven't won that one too. We've won it like that. Yeah, we've won the Europa. Let me just jump into this debate a second. Sorry, C C CB. I understand CB. I want to. I just want to go back to what you said about more scared of Man United now than you are Arsenal because we won a trophy last year. Mm -hmm. I understand that it's all about winning trophies, but at the same time, you've got to look at it from the perspective of, um, you have to look at it, in my opinion, from the perspective of where you see your club. Because if I think about the last, just say 25 years of English football, and we keep it to our nation because that's what we're talking about right now, the teams that have won the most trophies, would we not all agree, have been the teams that have consistently challenged for the league titles the most? No, that is a fair point. That is a fair point. In terms of United, why? Let, let me um, delve, delve further into it. Why I feel United more. If if you guys tell me Arsenal have started a new project now, they're challenging. They haven't completely gone over the hump. United have been a very poor ran team since post Fergie, but post Fergie, you guys have won a Europa League. You guys have won FA Cups. You've now won a, a Carabao Cup, and this is with everything being a mess. Same way with us, we're a mess. We've been to Wembley twice this season, but we're a mess. If you guys had a, a real sporting project put to play and you was to start winning, you won't stop because it's in your DNA. You've done it before. You know what it is. It's heritage at the end of the day. Arsenal I haven't... Has Arsenal, won a, has Arsenal won the trophy post Wenger? I mean, you, you've won the FA Cup. No, 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 no. Just go back. Just go back. Yeah, you've won the FA Cup. So, 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 so what? No, no. So that what was are even we, prior no, no, to no, no. the project so what are we, no, no, so what are we still saying then? You're saying post Fergie, Manu has won a cup, so it's in their DNA. Arsenal has won a cup post Wenger. It's not in Arsenal's DNA, right? I mean, like, well, it doesn't make any... You guys like, have a sporting what, project put into play, and you haven't won with this project. It CB, CB, CB. This project that we're talking about, we haven't won, but we're showing signs of competing now. Your project that you started 18 months ago is showing signs of decline. You have six titles as Chelsea. In the English Premiership history, we have 13. That's seven more than you. Regardless of your Champions League, which is the European trophy, let's not go there. We know you have two of those. If you're going to talk about English heritage, the EPL, the history, and who is big brother and who's little bro, you guys need to take several seats at yeah. the back. It's a good conversation. The viewers obviously have in there say, LB, I just want to throw this to you a, a minute. Man United scarier than Arsenal right now, based on historic trophies. Are you, are you buying that, or is it all about? You? He's not hearing it. What, what are you saying, LB? What are you saying? Uh, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not I can't go with that one, CB man. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like you know, I love to beat the Arsenal fans as well, you know, but that's that's a stretch to be fair, bro. Like, now nah, listen. At the end of the day, yeah, Arsenal have to win trophies now. It's all well and good. They always sitting there, yeah, and saying. Oh, like we got this sporting project. Yeah, like we're competing and stuff. Yeah. And to be fair, CB, like what you just said then, I cannot agree with in the slightest. But there does become a point where this Arsenal project actually has to win stuff. Yes. Rather than rather and I think we are even you agree, even Arsenal fans agree with me on that one, right? Dale, you yeah. gotta disagree yeah. with me. There has yeah. to become I a agree. point like I agree with where you. you actually have to win. Um now, I would say that for me, Arsenal look like a very good side. They, they look like a very, very good side right now. They can they, they can defend, they score goals, they can control the ball in the middle. Um, but when you get to, for me, when you get to this part of the season, it's not always about that. It's about the, the pressure that, that you're under. So we're about to find out whether or not, yeah, the mentality as well, you're out on that one. We're about to find out whether or not Arsenal could, could, could handle this. I would say, personally, if Arsenal go trophyless again this season, then for me, regardless of how the season ends, I think you do have to have a conversation about whether or not Arteta is the right guy. Now, the answer might be to that question, no, he is the right guy. But 
if you don't win anything again with the team that you've got, and you didn't win anything last year, and you bottled the top four before that, like there is a conversation. So for me, Arsenal are in the time now where it's put up or shut up. We all know Arsenal are a good team, yeah? And I know yeah. CB's chatting about United and that, but even he knows Arsenal are a good side. It's up to Arsenal now to win trophies. That's that's it. Yep. We're at the end game now. So I don't yep. even think Arsenal fans can disagree with that. I think that's a very, very fair comment to make. Yeah, I, I, I totally understand that. We are going to go to some super chats in a minute, but there has been some breaking news in the last few minutes, which I think is uh, interesting to go through. And that is that Leicester City have been charged. Um, I've been re sorry, the Premier League referred Leicester City to the Independent Commission for an alleged breach of profitability and sustainability rules. And they've also failed to submit their audited financial accounts to the league. So, Unlike Nottingham Forest, who appeared to comply completely, Leicester City are are doing a little bit of a madness and they haven't got everything in. So Leicester City, although they're looking like they may get promoted back to the Premier League, they could start next season with a huge, huge points deduction. It looks like they've breached FFP. They does, it appears they are not complying with... The, the investigations, and we have seen, as you pointed out the other day, LB, that major breaches and people that are not complying will, could suffer bigger consequences. So it's another team now, gentlemen, that's faced the, I, I the same fate as Everton like and, whole, and, and, and Forrest. I don't like this whole profit, profitability FFP model they're doing right now because I feel like they're punishing the smaller clubs. The whole purpose of an FFP and these type of mod, um, these type of you know agencies being put into place was so that we can balance the monopoly between the bigger teams and the smaller teams. But you're looking at a Nottingham Forest getting charged. Well, that that wasn't why it was put in place, per se. It was put in place to stop clubs spending more, overspending and creating debts that could put the clubs out of business. So the mm. idea was you every club is to live within its means. So if your club you know, only makes 300 million a year, you can't go and spend 500 million and run up a massive debt of wages that you can't afford to pay. And it appears some of the smaller clubs, because I don't think anyone's been punished, have been really doing that. And when you say you think it's a bit harsh, you should look at your own club because Chelsea look like they're in big trouble with this soon as well. So you might you might b balance the cart a little bit there, bruv. It looks like you guys could be two hundred million pound of losses over and and facing a slap wrist as well. You guys, generally... Le Le Leicester's was their fault ultimately. I, it's harsh, but what's their fault? They they had Rodgers and they went, oh, we could get Champions League here, yeah. so they spent big. They spent a fair amount of change. That's true. And then Rogers bottled it twice because Ro Brendan Rogers is a bottle job. I would know firsthand. He bottled it twice. They got Europa League twice. They simply couldn't afford it, which is why you saw you started to see them spend less, sell more, and fall down the table quite quickly. It was their own. It, it wasn't like oh they've been harshly done by. It was they bottled it, and they couldn't simply keep affording to. Ex spend what they were without the money from Champions League football. That's the risk some of these clubs take. That's why I think Brighton, everyone says, oh, Brighton, you know, they, they need to stop being a selling club, they need to start moving on quicker. No. No. Brighton just need to live within it, their means and grow it, naturally, naturally until they grow don't need to make time. such a big jump. And isn't it funny? The three teams that have been, two been deducted, Leicester might now get dumb. They're the three teams that went big and failed. Forest of all the players they bought last year, and everyone said, How can you buy that many players? Ridiculous. Look how much money Everton spent over that three or four year period. They went crazy and they fouled. And Leicester went for Champions League twice, but they hired a manager who has zero balls and it failed. And at the end of the day, they're all going to cry their fans that we gained no sporting advantage. Look where we are. But you tried to, but you failed. At the end of the day, it's like. If you go into a bank today with a gun, if I go into a bank today with a gun, I'll say I did it. And I go in there and I wave the gun about, I ask for the money, I bottle it and I run out and I trip over and the police arrest me. Just because I haven't nicked any money doesn't stop me getting in trouble. Just because I didn't gain a financial advantage through this bank robbery I did doesn't mean it isn't illegal. And I'm just, honestly, I, I think people are warped and we can prove this because LB, Man City haven't cheated, have they? Don't know. We'll find out soon. But you don't think they've cheated yet? I'm just, uh, I'm just no, no, no. I, I don't know whether they've cheated or not. I say, no, I'll, I'll find that's out. A, I've, been, I've been a bit funny. I, I respect your answer because if, if if City haven't cheated, then FFP doesn't stop small clubs becoming big clubs, does it? 
if Chelsea haven't cheated, if Chelsea haven't cheated, then FFP doesn't stop the smaller clubs catching the giant clubs. So I don't like this notion that FFP stops the small clubs growing. How have Brighton in the last decade gone from where they were in football obscurity to a team that's now in yep. Europe? If FFP stops you, yeah, it's no, that's fair, but it's, it's yeah, no, but I think where that argument stops is it. It can, I believe, it can only take you so far. So I, th I think with proper management, uh, proper proper investment, buying the right players, it can take you to where about Brighton are. The question is, and no one's proved this yet, is can it take you from there, maybe an eighth or seventh, to a team that can win the title? It could. It could. Because in if you look at it in time, because if you look at a team like Arsenal that was run by what board, board for the longest time with the Cronkies only and only about 60 percent up until 2018 when they bought out Arsenal, you will find someone who's going to come into Brighton and be like, you know what? Hey, let's pump in big money now because Brighton is at a place where they put themselves financially stable as a business that you're willing to invest. Another you shake can't compare from... Arsenal to Brighton, though. No, bro. no, I'm not comparing Arsenal. I'm saying another shake can look at them, look at Newcastle, look at them and pump money into them. And they can get better players, build up the system some more, and then go compete. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can. I don't think it can. And I think the reason it can't do that is because you're well, talking about the smaller clubs. So if you've got good players at the smaller clubs, these players are not going to want to wait around. If a Liverpool, a City, an Arsenal, a Chelsea, a Man United come knocking, they're going to want to leave. And that's exactly what happened to Brighton. McAllister gone. Caicedo gone. Cucurella gone. Yeah. Because yeah. these players but are Brighton, too, too good Brighton Brighton, so they want to leave. Yeah, Brighton I, I has one of the best scouting systems, though. Yeah. They have LB, one of the best scouting you, systems. Yeah. LB, me and you have been through this a few times on straight facts. We both agree. The only way around this is allowing owners to put money into some kind of bond, some kind of bank account that protects mm. what, they're, what, what they're spending and the wage bills they create, as an example. Brighton only makes 220, 230 million pound a year of income. They suddenly had a wage bill of 500 million to try and win the league. Somebody would have to bankroll that for at least five years in, 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 to cover I, them. I completely example. agree with that part. Now, yeah, no, that's yeah. doable, but th there is there is another side to that as well. I, we, after our show the other day, someone left a comment on this, and but then you might only have seven or eight teams in the whole of Europe that have owners that are willing to do that. They then buy all the best players in the world. They create these wage bills that nobody else compete with, and then you genuinely create that gap. And it doesn't matter who the, who, the, who those teams are. It could be Man City. The Sheikh might sell by then, and you know it, it could be someone else. And you're only, it's only then going to be those seven or eight teams that have all the best players, and nobody else could get anywhere near it because not everyone's going to have one of those owners. So I think there's merit for both arguments. But what I will say is this: we all sign up to the rules. We all agree to what the rules are. I'm sick and tired of people signing up to rules breaking them and then moaning about them like they that, like they didn't know what they were doing. And the fact that clubs like Leicester are failing to comply with, like, show us this document, show us this information, and they're refusing to do it, it's as dodgy as a £9 note. It's as dodgy as a £9 well, note well, to well, me. I see, I see something, Terry, about... Because Nottingham Forest obviously didn't vote for the... Because they weren't in the Premier League when these the rules were introduced. But Everton, Everton did vote for the rules. So Everton, for example, they can't really be moaning too much because they did vote for the rules. I don't know if you've seen this, because obviously it is just breaking news, but the wording from Leicester's mad strong. At the end of their statement, they put, um, we will defend the club and, if necessary, will continue to defend itself from any unlawful acts by the football authorities. That is mad. See, this, 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 is, this is the problem that I have with it. It's it's this, they've all, they've, the, the team teams like Leicester would have been the ones that really pushed for this. Because it was literally, when you look at who voted against FFP and profit sustainability, it was literally Chelsea and City were the only two teams who didn't want it. Because they were the only two teams that had owners that were genuinely willing to pump 20, 30 billion pound over the next two or three decades into a club. And that's it. Nobody else did. And I think they looked at it as, well, if those two teams can do that, the rest of us have no chance. So they all voted for it. They've mismanaged it. They've come a cropper and now they're threatening legal action. But the problem that they've got is that they don't really have much where, nowhere to go because in the agreements, everybody signs every year. So although Nottingham Forest didn't agree to that law, when you essentially get into the Premier League, what they do is Leicester City are removed as a partner of the Premier League and Forest are added as a partner. But when you're added as a partner, you sign off on the rules still. Forest could have been promoted and gone, well, we don't agree to that, so we'll go back to the Championship, please. You still agreed to adhere to the rules and for me i'm just yeah but my my view is this if you agree like if you're if you're a runner cb you're an olympic you're going to want to be an olympic 100 meter sprinter you, you you agree to not take steroids right 
You agree to not take certain fat burning drugs. You agree to not eat certain foods or take certain substances because that's the rules of the uh, rules of the game. Right. You can't go in, take the drugs. They say we're going to ban you. And you say, well, actually, I didn't I never invented those rules. So therefore, I'm allowed to take steroids in the Olympics. It's just you agree to the rules and the rules. I just don't understand what people are doing. It's crazy to me. The, the thing is, the, the idea that the, the part that gets me about it is the whole, well, we've not seen any club be successful from jumping from sixth to first. Yes, I agree. Because they've all tried the same flawed method, which is spend a load of money, which requires you to bridge a big gap in a short period of time. And if that doesn't happen, you, you're done for. I, I hope that a club like Brighton, if they do want to close this gap, stick by their model. Whole, you know, you know, st stick by the horses, or all this sort of stuff. Make sure they don't deviate and start going. Well, we'll spend eighty million, ninety million, a hundred million, and then they sit there after two years where they haven't been able to close the gap and go, oh no, oh no. Well, it's a disgrace that this is a rule. It's a disgrace that that is a rule because let's say, yeah, because if left and Everton left were the constantly the allowed to, yeah. it it, pun it doesn't punish Everton for spending a hundred million. It doesn't. It punishes them. Well, spending a hundred million and being bad, basically. Do you know what? Yeah, do you know what part of me wants to see? Go get rid of it. Let everyone do what they want. But if any of you are going out of business, I don't want to hear none of you moan. Because this is the problem. If this if this wasn't here controlling people, Pete, so much would have. Can you imagine if the UK didn't bring in laws thirty years ago that seatbelts were compulsory? How many more people would die in car crashes? Genuinely. It's, but they brought the law in. Now, we don't know what the stats would be without seatbelts becoming the law because everyone wears a seatbelt pretty much. But this is how I view this. It's come in. Because imagine how much more money Everton's owners, Leicester's owners, Nottingham Forest owners would have spent if there wasn't a limit. And then what would they do to clear that debt? There is no guarantee those billionaires would pay it off. They could just sell it for a pound or walk away, or stop investing money, and they could kill those football clubs from existence. And that's the problem, because they're not pumping the money in now, are they? Well, Nottingham Forest owners still willing to do it. The other two owners slowed right down, didn't they? After it didn't work, after, or after, after a big pump. That's why you've got to have protection against this. And the thing is, as well, LB, our, our thing about having a, a pot where they have to put money into, I guarantee you the owners don't agree to do it. And the reason why the owners won't agree to do it is because most of them want to be able to fucking walk away whenever they want. And if they're tied in like that, they can't do it. So you won't probably find enough clubs will vote for that anyway, because then it ties them up in knots. So it, again, maybe they should try it and see who actually comes out. But yeah, Leicester, I, again, I, I feel the same about them as I do Forest, as I do Everton. Their fans are angry at the league and the other clubs. Be angry at your owners. This is the maddest thing. It's like if Chelsea, if Chelsea genuinely get a 20 point deduction next year, get kicked out the league for cheating and everything else, ain't the league they should be angry with. It's Roman for cheating back in the day and Todd Bowley and co for messing up now. Why suddenly? Like, it's Honestly, it's, it's a madness to me. It's, it's a madness to me. A club like Everton, for example, or Nottingham Forest, because their fan base are not going to look at the owners because their ownership will show an ambition, bringing in a Hammers Rodriguez to, to Goodison Park and so forth. They're looking at it like, wow, you guys are showing ambition to compete. You brought us an Ancelotti. Same with Nottingham Forest. We just got signed. We just got promoted and spent 150 million. You're showing intent. A fan base wants to see that. It's different for a Chelsea nowadays because we're spending money, but we're spending money on dross. We're spending money on people that no one knows. We have to Google them and watch random comps or, you know, they've got five-star potential on FM. So that is a bit different. We're not looking at that. Like, if we was to get ffp for splashing Doe and Mbappe and Vinicius and so forth, I'll be happy. I'm not looking at the owners. I'll say, you know what? Fair enough. You you tried. You, you, you're, you're, this is ambition at the end of the day. But it's, this <laughs> a, there's, a, there's a fine line between ambition and and this FFP stuff with the smaller clubs. That's what I'm saying. And I, I, it's... I feel like mm. we, need to, we need to try and find a way to balance these rules out a bit differently. It's in, yeah, listen, I, I think they could always look to reform them 110%. However, that doesn't mean you can break the rules. Now, there's got some super chats here that says Arsenal bankrolled by the Bank of England, Liverpool by Littlewoods, owners of United by millionaire Irishman pre-Glazers. But yeah, no one should be allowed to spend to catch up. See, this is the thing, though, DJ, that isn't what people are saying. And I, I think you're taking things to an, an extremity. 
these were millions of pounds that were pumped in, but it was millions of pounds that made teams slightly richer than others. Now that you've got billionaires getting involved and trillionaires getting involved and states getting involved, the level of money, if there was no limit, you could theoretically have a situation where an owner who's worth hundreds of billions says, Mbappe, don't go Madrid, come to me. I want to come to England. I'll pay you a million pound a day, two million pound a day. So Mbappe signs a five-year deal to earn 360 million pound a year plus all the other players, and the wage bill is one and a half billion pound a year. And then that owner has a heart attack, or that owner says, actually, I'm not pumping the money in, or something happens between his country and America, and suddenly he can't be the owner of a Premier League club again. We've seen that happen, of course. And then suddenly a club is left with a debt that it cannot pay itself. Something had to be created because you have to look beyond the end of your nose. This was going, and we saw it starting to cause problems with QPRs, Portsmouth, Rangers, Newcastle, Leighton Orient, and they stepped in and put something in place. Does it need reform? Yes, but there has to be checks and balances. There has to be limits. And people say it's anti-competitive. There are competition laws within business in the UK. You can't just, like Elon Musk just can't come to England and open any business he wants or buy any business he wants and pump as much money into it as he wants. There's laws that govern that still. And this has to be the same. Uh, Brighton have a billionaire owner. They are not broke. There we go. Uh, reason why Chelsea's owners had accelerated rebuild is whispers of transfer ban due to Roman scandal. We're going we're gonna to get onto that in a minute. We'll save that super yeah, but chat. That, I, I mean, I, I just say at that point, trust your brilliant academy, which everyone raves on about, which is apparently, you know, wins tournaments every year. And the last time I had a transfer ban, you have to trust the academy. Do you some of your best players? You would be we're going to come off to Chelsea. The yeah, we'll come back to, the Chelsea. Chelsea to this world. Let me do these super chats. We'll come back to Chelsea in a second. Uh, funny that FFP actually destabilizing clubs more, especially these smaller clubs lower down the tables or relegation means now. I mean, it's not destabilizing them. They they, they broke the rule. It's like, it's like saying, again, if I go out and break the law tonight, okay, I go out tonight and I rob Tesco down the road from me and then I get arrested and I go to prison my business fouls and my children don't have a dad. Oh my God, the law has destabilized Harry's family. No, it's a punishment for breaking the law. If there's a, there's laws to the game, there's rule. It's like saying the referees really ruined that game because they sent a player off for breaking someone's leg. No, don't break the leg. Come on now. How are we blaming the punishment to rules that people agree to for being the problem as opposed to people breaking the rules? What, where am I living right now? I feel like I'm in the twilight zone. You, you know what's oh. crazy, Terry? You know what's crazy? Even with Nottingham Forest, right? They were giving a lower um, target. They weren't giving the 105 loss a year. FFP said to them they could do 30 million. Like, they, if they exceeded, like, they, they even put that because they just got promoted. They said, you're not going to make that much revenue. We're not going to cap you after 105 because that's going to be a lot for you. Put you in a lot of trouble. Here's a cap for you. They still went ahead of it, over it. Like, so they're even trying to help the smaller clubs by saying, listen, if you're coming in from the championship into the premiership, we're not going to give you the same for the first season. You're not going to be put under the same FFP um, limits, which is one of, you can't, you can't make a loss of up to 105, 105 million pounds a year, right? Yeah. For the big clubs. Yeah. But then over yeah. three years, you can't keep that up over three years as well because they're going to look at it year on year so, on year so the, on year. The on. Premier League one is a little different to, to your wages as yeah. well. Uh, but I, I hear you, bro. This this here says uh, Terry uh, looks like Tristan Tate. I take that. He's not a bad looking geezer. <laughs> um, uh, international break sucks. US is mid and Spain home country is also mid. Where is the Premier League, La Liga, Serie A? Well, it's on the international break, man. <laughs> That's where it is. You see the topic uh, that you're just talking on? Would you say the best model ideally would be what a salary cap similar to what the NBA do where each franchise or team has their, a certain amount of money that everyone is, is an equal amount that everyone is supposed to spend throughout the league. Yeah. I mean, you could, you could, you could do that, but again, you could break this rule down and go, it's the same thing. Now everyone's got a cap. Now you can't spend, can't lose a certain amount and people are going over it. So it, you can have it, but then all I'm saying is people have got to stick to the rules. So say there's a salary cap. You can't spend more than 300 million a year on salary. Great. If a team spends up 320, they'll then moan, oh, but the rules are damaging us. That, you can't do that. Like, whatever the rule is, great. I'll accept. Whatever the rule is, I'll accept. 
but we've got to stick to the fucking rules, man. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's they're all fair. doable. Uh, this here says, uh, CB, uh, can I get some of what you had? That must be some good shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bit silly if people can't recognize bigger clubs have bigger budgets. Uh, Leicester, Forest, Everton, all massively overspent uh, for their budgets. No agenda. That's the point. It backs that early on. It's like, oh, it's it's destabilizing clubs. FFP didn't force Leicester to spend 100 million quid. FFP didn't force Everton to spend 200 million quid and hand James Rodriguez and Alan massive wage wages that can compete. Yeah, with you're punishing the them clubs. though for being ambitious though and actually trying to invest in the team. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so there's, there's, there's a difference between mean, being ambitious and being stupid, though. Like you, you have to know that as a club well, of I, that I, size, like you, you, you know, you like they know the rules. They know the rules, and they you have a hundred million. To spend not and they know the rules. LB, LB, let me ask you a question. I know then. what LB is doing there. So if I want to grow, if I want to grow, if I want to grow my business, I've got fifty grand put aside for my tax bill. But instead of paying my tax, I invest it in two new members of staff, and then I get sanctioned by the inland revenue. And I get a massive fine for not paying my tax. Is that the inland revenue punishing me for being ambitious, or am I being punished for not following the rules and the law of the land? Yeah, but that, that's a completely different situation. It's not, it's, 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 it's not different well, in any. Of course, it is. Of course it is. Of course it is. Of course it is. Yeah, it is. You've got a tax yeah. bill. You should probably pay, pay your tax bill. But you've got a limit to how much you're allowed to spend and lose. Every club's got the same cap of what they can lose. Someone's lost more than that. That's not being punished for being ambitious. That's being punished for overspending. But if, if, if Le yeah, but if Leicester had the ambition of trying to get in the top four, to, and they and to do that, they had to spend money. But, 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 but the FFP, listen, but the FFP rule says this. It says but, you uh, can't uh, spend. Uh, F FFP on, didn't see. stop F them uh, exactly. after year F one. They had like three attempts at it. They spent and, and, and then spent and, 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 and then spent. Guess what? Tom, LB, football's not guaranteed. Sport isn't a guaranteed LB, outcome. Sometimes LB, you go for it. You don't. You don't hit it. The FFP rule states that you can't spend more than 105 million pounds in a year, right? Uh, guys, you, just stop for a second. But, Sorry, but you have to guarantee 90 so, million by your owners. So the, yeah, so let's so, not stop this. It's not FFP. It's profit and sustainability. It's a different rule. Yeah, profit so and sustainability, it's, yeah. It's, a, it's 30 million a year. Um, But yeah, listen, I get where you're coming from, LB. I do get where you're coming from. But they knew the rules before they did it. And that's why I don't have sympathy. Uh, if you take... Uh, there's some other super chats here on other subjects. This says... um. Uh, Judge Eric Ten Hag on his youth project, 21s and 18s. The culture is changing. It just hasn't reflected in the first team yet. If he continues like this, United will win the league in 2026. Mark my words. Well, listen, I hope you're right, Marcy. I hope you're right, genuinely. If you take the captaincy off Bruno, can you still keep him? Probably not. Uh, another academy player to watch next is uh, Shay Lacey. I've seen footage of this kid. Honestly, one of the reasons why I want the Glazers gone is so I can get MUTV back so I can watch the Academy again because I, I miss watching it. Last like five, six years. But yeah, I've heard he's very, very good. Uh, how many times has Chelsea beat Arsenal in the last four years? Once. How many times have Arsenal beat Chelsea in the last four years? Five times. Do you know in them four years? Do you know what's crazy? Arsenal are in a longer trophy drought than us. We're in the mud stop, right now. Stop saying this thing. Okay, okay, CB, CB. Since 2015 till now, Arsenal has won four... FA Cups in nine right. years. Yeah, right. 2015 to now. That means that's one cup every two years. So you okay. keep saying this. Hold on. You keep saying drought. Hold on. You guys keep saying drought and conveniently just want to forget that there are other trophies being won in England because it's <laughs> Arsenal, because you just want to banter. What if you win, hold on. Hold on. We've won, listen, we've won four FA Cups in nine years. That means one cup every two years. Since 2015 till now, 2015, 2017, 2020, you want you can go back and look at it. Hey, well, now I'll ask you, yeah. They were so a Champions League, though, bro. They were a Champions League. League before, no, no, I agree. I agree. I'm not. I'm not comparing. LB, 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 I'm not comparing. Are you LB. Open LB. Oh, guys, 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 one at a time, please. Go, go. We'll, we'll come back to this. Trophies. We'll come back to this conversation um, in in a bit, gents. This is, Arsenal could easily spend like Chelsea, but the goal is sustainability for a club long term. I agree. Um, isn't great scouting and trusting in the academy better for the game? Buying success is done outside of the rules, makes success a lot less special. Being ambitious is not always about spending. I think it's a mixture of the two, isn't it? You know, you look at Manchester City, and yes, they've spent a lot of money. Man United spent a lot of money, but they've also brought players through or bought players relatively cheaply that are young and, and talented and turned them into very good football players. And I think 
successful teams in the modern day era have to do a combination of, of both those things, in, in my opinion. But great super chat, my friend. Uh, United won the FA Cup, so are scarier than Arsenal. This is why Big Steve says the Terrace fans have no football knowledge. Uh, we are we are all biased and tribal, but please apply some logic, please. I will say this very quickly. The football terrace community, our football knowledge is as good as anybody else's. It's just, well, I disagree with what CB is saying here. Ironically, there's people that work with Big Steve <laughs> that share the same views as CB about winning trophies. Uh, but there we go. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't use it as a thing to attack the rest of the panel or attack CB or attack the audience because you're one of them, my friend. Um, so thank you very much uh, for the super chat and big up Big Steve and everyone over there, uh, the channels he works with. Uh, why is a team who is going to be in the championship or worse soon talking about little bro to us? <laughs> <laughs> you guys really believe, yeah, a team that's owned by a private equity firm is going to have financial issues to the point where we're going to get relegated. Let's be serious here. That's, I don't even respect the ownership. Hang on, hang on. But Nottingham Forest, Everton and Leicester are owned by billionaires and they're going through it. Bro. And billionaires are smart, right? That's how they yeah, became billionaires in the first place. Really? It doesn't, it doesn't hold on, hold on. But billionaires are smart. That's how they became billionaires in the first place, right? They've got good financial people around them. They've got a good team around them. They've built their businesses. They're smart. They're billionaires. Billionaires. Not million, billionaires. But their clubs have faced it. So what makes Chelsea any different? Because well, it's an equity firm. Well, wait, because wait. because an, an equity firm does not know anything about football. You might know about equity so, so and investment. Very, very quickly, this is a good segue into the different? into the conversation about Chelsea. So Chelsea have up their ticket prices, or they're going to be up in their ticket prices. There was a letter that was sent in by the Chelsea Supporters Trust, who wrote to Todd Bowley and Egg Barley. And um, in, in writing to them about the concerns of ticket prices and claiming a lack of engagement could lead to irreversible toxicity between the fans and ownership. The letter back from the CEO of Chelsea says it's a necessity to increase revenue to put us on par um, with our rivals. You've got supporters clubs producing artwork of your ownership all looking like clowns, which is why our thumbnail looks the way that it does today. We obviously went through some of this on Tuesday with some of this on Tuesday with LB, but uh, what I welcome Rory to the show. Chelsea, of course, are under investigation for potentially cheating the system and paying for players off the books in the Roman era. Chelsea have self-reported on that. There is a court case going on next month where it's believed that more of these quote unquote dodgy dealings could be unveiled at the same time. A lot of financial experts are claiming there is going to be a 200 million pound black hole at the end of this season for Chelsea to fill. They're whacking up ticket prices. They're looking for sponsors left, right and center to try and raise money. Some fans are angry. You're very angry with how you're playing. It doesn't seem to me, CB, like your club is in a stable position right now in any capacity. But it does seem to be a lot of Chelsea fans with their head very, very deeply buried in the sand that the private equity firm will get out of this and we're going to be okay. Is that what you believe? So, uh, no. So in terms of Chelsea being unstable, I 100% agree. The, the club is not being ran correctly. The The model of our club um, is we are, we're trying to become a team who spends, uh, buys players, young players for cheap, develop them, kind of similar to an RB Salzburg, RB Leipzig or a Brighton model type of club. As a Chelsea, the stature of our team, what I've grown up to see over the years, I don't agree with that model whatsoever. Now, in terms of the financial situation, as we mentioned earlier with um, the fact that Leicester are not complying and so forth, these private equity guys have come in. The first thing they've done is found a massive loophole in contract situations, doing the eight-year rule, um, have put in funds in, spending money through amortization and so forth. That was a game changer within the football game and it, it led to rules being changed immediately. The fact that they're able to have loopholes to that degree makes me confident knowing, okay, your bread and butter at the end of the game, you guys are not footballing guys. The reason I don't agree with this the ownership and why I don't like them is because they're not footballing guys. They don't agree with, with winning. They agree with sustainability, making money, profits, et cetera, et cetera. That's, the, that's where I clash with the ownership. So when it comes to this type of situation, I have no fear in my heart whatsoever about the charges that we're facing. Because firstly, 
they self-reported these claims themselves. They are completely complying with everything that's going on. They're the ones that brew it up and said, okay, we've noticed this in the books 10 years ago prior to us. Here it is. They're not going to punish them for it. There's a new ownership, especially with the government situation and how they got brought in in the first place. I don't think they're going to be punished for it. That, that's not how it works, though. Like, if I, do, look, if I do a crime 10 years ago and I hide it, and then but somebody comes, oh, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. And then 10 years later, I go report myself to the police. Do you think they're not going to take it up? Of course they will. The FA will take up whatever. If, if you've done something wrong, what you need to understand, I self-reporting, that is a good thing to do. That is the yeah. right thing to do. They did the right thing. Don't get it wrong. That does not mean they will not face the consequences of that action. Because during that period where they did whatever they did, they gained an advantage over other clubs. Somebody else could have won in those years. But they gained an advantage. Now you're reporting yourself. You're going to have to face up to it. Whether it's points deduction, a fine, a penalty. They could say, oh, it's been 10 years, so we'll give you a fine for this one. They could say, oh, you know what? This one was more recent. You're getting three points for this. Or you're getting four points for that. And then now let's talk about what you're going through right now, which, which is a lot of the sales that you made last season, most of most Chelsea fans thought that that sale was going to count into, um, into this season. Like, oh, they're going to be able to spend more money now. No, they just realized that a lot of that still is not for last season, it's for the season before. Mason Mount's money is not counted as that. So you're owing close to 200 million. You're in debt of almost 200 million from last season. Even if I you sold players, what even if you sold players, what's 100 million now? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Just let me finish this. Even if you sold players right now, what's 100 million? You have to do it before June 31st. That's your deadline. July the 1st is a new, is a new, is a new financial year. So you are in trouble. You have to figure it out between now and June 31st. So the big difference is just because I self-reported means I'm not going to get penalized. That's not how it works in the real world. You, if, if you walk into yeah. and go report yourself for something you did three years ago right now to the police, you're going to get penalized for it regardless. You guys want to understand Also, it. regarding the sales so, so, what, what, points, what, it just right. means every other club knows you, you, you're on the back foot negotiating straight away because every other club who wants to buy your players will just go, you kind of got to sell before this days. So if we just wait, eventually, because you need the money, you'll probably have to say yes. Mm -hmm. So that, that also puts you on the back foot. So where, where you might yeah. sit there and go, well, if we sell them for 50 and in for 45, the club will go, we'll pay 35 for them. And you go, no. And the time keeps ticking down and ticking down and ticking down. And the deadline looms close and you go, we might just need that money. And then someone else might have to go. And it, it throws plans up in the air. The, the problem Chelsea have is these owners have come in with a model for a club that does not match the size and does not match the culture that was previously existing at right. the club. Right. Chelsea have never been a club that developed young right. talent in right. the way that a Salzburg or all these other clubs have. And it wouldn't work at Chelsea. And the, 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 to say they tried the Salzburg model is mental because they've broke the British transfer record twice. So they're not buying young players for cheap. They're buying young players are very expensive, leaving very little margin for profit, and then sitting there going, "Why are we losing money?" Oh no, you got you get all the risks. I, 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 we, we showed this. We showed this yesterday as well, and this is another thing that Chelsea fans need to be very again challenging this about your club. So I'm going to put this back up on the screen, uh, and, and we did this yesterday. This shows you here. This is from Deloitte. This is from your trading account. So forget all the websites that think they know what people's wages are and stuff. It's crazy. Chelsea, crazily, I didn't realize this. You only make 88 million a year through revenue on match days. To give you an example, Spurs, who are a much smaller club than you, make 135 million a year. Arsenal make about 118 million a year. You look at Man United, we make 150 million a year. City that are looked at as really, really make 83 million a year. Who people know City's fan base isn't as big as others yet, but they're they're on the rise. But the scary thing for Chelsea is your turnover is around 590 million, but 79 percent of that is spent on your wages. 79 percent. Now, where it gets dangerous for you is that FFP has now changed its rules. In Europe, so it, you can't spend more on players. So that's wages, bonuses, stat, um, salaries, uh, image rights, agent fees, and transfers. More than seventy percent of your turnover. Your wages are at seventy nine percent. You add in your agent fees, your bonuses. You add in your image rights. You add in transfer fees. You lot are spending, in my opinion, without what you're losing as well, by the way, 200 million pound black hole, you're spending 120, 130% of your turnover. 
So whatever you're currently spending, it's got to drop by 50% plus. Genuinely. This idea that, chill, and I know you've got new shirt sponsors coming, but even then you start breaking this down. I haven't done the full research on this yet. But someone says, we've got a new 70, 40 million pound a year shirt sponsor coming in. I went, oh, that's good. I went and checked what your old spurt sh 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 shirt sponsor pays per year. It's 40 million. So there's no, it's no new money. It's what yeah. it is. And I'm, you probably are going to increase those areas slightly. But you're not increasing it by the 50 or 60% that you need. And I honestly look at this and think the Chelsea Football Club are lying to the media who are then lying to you fans by telling you, well, there was a report in September. There's a report in September that said you lot are going to spend another 300 million pounds this summer. I can't fathom how. And, and, and I'm talking, I'm not an expert on this per se, but I, I worked in this industry. I have sent messages to some of the leading financial experts in the world that I know. How are they going to do this? And they're all looking at it and they're like, unless something comes in out of nowhere, is pulled out from a magic hat, no one can understand how you keep spending like this loophole or no loophole. That loss coupled with what you've self-reported for, plus everything else, Chelsea could be in massive trouble. No European football as well, no Champions League football. Well, ex exactly, and that's 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 even if you got into it, you wouldn't be allowed in it. Even if you qualify for the Champions League now, you ain't making enough money to play in it. They're going to say no, bruv. You ain't got you ain't got the facilities, big man. You guys are in so much trouble financially. It's absolutely crazy. Your ways bill is basically eighty percent of your turnover. Yeah, that's crazy. I wasn't even aware of that. And that kind of explains, because for me, my main issues going into this season was the fact that we, we got it out our wage bill, losing the likes of Jorginho, Havertz, Mao, etc., and replaced them with young, unproven players on low wages. So now that kind of explains why they went about that that process. You've got to be very CB, careful CB. with the wages. You've got to be very careful with the wages. So what wages do? All the websites So oh, look, we were on 150 million a year wages. Now we're only on 120 million. That shows all those websites show you the base. They don't show you image rights. They don't show you bonuses. Like Man City, biggest wages in the Premier League, got 490 million pound a year. It's not on a website. It's on their trading accounts. You could there's about 30 to 40 million of that 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 is staff at the football club that do normal jobs, the 500 staff that they employ. But the vast majority is based on players, as an example. And that'll be the same for all of you. But you're capped still, irrespective. Rory, you were going to say something a minute ago. I wanted to throw it over to you. Sorry. Uh, yeah, no, I was just going to say that that June 30th deadline is is interesting because it's going to work the other way for the teams that could potentially buy from Chelsea in that most clubs are going to have to wait for that deadline to go before they can buy players. In the same way that no one mm. bought players in January, the the window is the same for buying clubs as it, is, as it is for selling clubs. So buying clubs are going to be going, well, we can't buy this player before the June 30th because then for that three-year block, we'll be in trouble. So we've got to go. It, it was like it, we did it with, we bought Kai Havertz before June 30th, but we bought Declan Rice after it last, last summer because we couldn't afford to do it the other way around. And that's going to happen again. So there's just going to be this... Yeah, this this butting of heads of Chelsea going, well, you've got to buy them before June 30th. And the, the buying club's going to go, well, you're going to have to reduce the price because we can't buy them. Um, so I think it's going to be, yeah, I think it's going to be a very interesting and entertaining interesting, yeah. period. Just to touch on what you, you we showed. Might, we might see a, a lot of loan, we might see a, lo a lot of loan to buy. We might see yeah. that happen. A lot of loan to buy might happen this, uh, does, that, this does, that, does that count though, Dale? Because they do not need the money in like guaranteed. I know, they but that's the thing. Do. Yeah, but if you, they need, if you uh, do... no, they need to, they need to make profit, and the players they need to sell are basically academy players academy because, players. because they need to, yeah because all the other youngsters that they've got, even if they sold like Enzo for 80, 90 million as an example, they still owe a hundred million on him, so they're not making any money on that. They need to sell, basically, and this is the problem they've got: it's Shalaba and Gallagher and Broya that they've got to try and raise two hundred million pound from. Yeah, like, and just, to, just, just to touch on what you mentioned earlier, because in case I, we forget. you guys need what's his name? You need David Dickinson down there, quick, bruv. <laughs> the, the the sticker situation with the clown, um, the clown lake stuff is absolutely spot on, and it's it's very. I'm, I'm very happy that Tier One Media, shout out to Matt Law, is actually um, writing about these things because there's been a massive disconnect between the fan base and the ownership for a very long time. It's been brewing for ages. From you could say. Last season, the sacking of Tuchel out of the blue to the Graham Potter hire, even with Graham Potter, they didn't stand firm on their decision. They were, Todd Bowley was on Twitter spaces listening to the fans saying, oh, yeah, sack him. And he sacks him mid-Champions League tie. When, when Graham Potter was even in the Champions League, that was the only competition he was actually doing well in. 
mid tie against Real Madrid, we get he gives us the Lampard and we get bounced mid season. Our season ended in March. We everything else we were playing for nothing. So that was already steaming. Then the Pochettino hire, it doesn't take anyone to know that Chelsea would not back a Tottenham manager. That's, that, that never works. We had Rafa Benitez during our Europa League run in 12-13 um, season. He won us a Europa League and we still hated his guts. So bring, bringing in a Pochettino didn't make sense. There was a massive disconnect from the very beginning. So now looking at this, the, the state of where our club is at, a lot of young, unproven players being signed for 80-odd million, 100 million, etc., and they're not delivering what's expected. You look at the the fact that they're the the you see um interviews from the CEOs of the Clear Lakes and so forth talking about Chelsea and saying, Oh, yes, obviously now you, you're talking about the financial situation, fair enough. But they're coming out, Bali's coming out and saying, Yeah, Roman wasn't running the club properly. We're trying to change the way Roman ran the club. And we're looking at it as fans and we're saying, Hold on, we're winning trophies every year, we're competing at the highest level. We're, we're mid-table back to back now. This is the second second season in a row. We're mid-table in February, and and you're telling me now Roman ran the club poorly. Obviously, you're looking at the financial situation. It makes sense why he said that now. But Roman wasn't Roman as well as an owner. He was really just doing it for the love of the game. He wasn't trying to make money off us. Yeah, he he, he was he was committing sort of transfer fraud just for the love of the game. Yeah, yeah, literally. <laughs> but is <it's>, is <laughs> you look and then you see what's going on at Strasbourg with. The clear with the blue coal, they're they're pro the ultras are protesting, putting banners out saying blue coal out, etc., demanding change. And we've, we've they've written a letter, the, the Chelsea fans trust have written a letter to the ownership. The ownership's response was something like, Oh, we we work very hard to bridge a relationship amongst the Muslim fan base and the, the Jewish fan base. Just a very political answer. They didn't actually address the concerns that we are actually having as a club. We're, yeah. we're terrible right now. We're literally mid-table fodder. There's no player that really takes me out of my seat barring a Cole Palmer, and he shouldn't even be the best player of Chelsea's team. No one at Chelsea, you know, at bro, the time. Let me ask you a question, bro. Do you know what one thing I respect about you? You said it on the last show, and Don, you know, Don nearly lost his mind when you said that a lot of these players aren't good enough. I know you're not very happy with a lot of the players that you've purchased. 100%. Um, and, and I get you there. And we're going to, you know, what are the players, what are the big money players that you've signed that you think are absolutely wrong for Chelsea and are just not of the standard? Uh, I wouldn't say big, from just from top to bottom, every signing that we've done, the only ones I would keep, that makes it easier. The only players that I would say are good bits of business is Malo Gusto for, for 18 million or 20 million. That was a class signing. We needed to reach James Carver. We expected him to get injured. It happened. He's only played five games for us and Gusto is actually in class for us. Um, Caicedo wasn't overpaid. Um, the fact where we celebrated getting when Stanley, the well, not we, the fan base on social media celebrated bringing in a Lawrence Stewart and a Win Stanley because of the relationships they had with Brighton. The negotiations stalled for pretty much a whole um, preseason. Caicedo came in with no preseason, and we overpaid 115 million. We knew the price. We stalled for, for so much, but Caicedo's actually been okay. I don't like the fact that Caicedo's grouped with Enzo Fernandez who I don't think, think he's actually good enough or what the media say he is or what the average Chelsea fan will say he is. Um, but I think Caicedo has been a class. And I like Cole Palmer signing. I wasn't happy with the Cole Palmer signing at the time because Fabrizio was making, done a live stream and he was like, oh, it appeared to me in a dream, Chelsea about to sign a superstar marquee signing from a Champions League club. And I'm like, finally, we're getting some experience in. And then I see Cole Palmer and I'm like, you're taking a mick. But he's come in and he's been class. So them three for me, Okay, you could say Jackson's all right, but Jackson is more. I look at Jackson more as a second striker, like how we used to have a Demba Bar in the past or a Bashwai in the past, and then we had a Diego Costa starting, or you know, what I'm saying a Drogba starting. Mm -hmm. He's he's more of a cup yeah, striker. Some way back there, uh, CB for some good strikers, man. Yeah, it's a striker. And then Tony is. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Bashwai is still on your books because that guy always seems to still be there, <laughs> even no, when we no, thought he was no. gone. Surely not, man. Surely not, man. It's, it's but you, I, I, this is this is one thing I don't kind of get with you. And this is well, I'm not calling you out. I'm just trying to understand no, this. It's not yeah. a call out. Is you rightfully call out lots of poor signings? The football project is bad. How about you treated managers is bad? Yeah. But yet you still seem to have complete and utter faith that these same owners that you call Clown Lake are going to not have these financial issues and are not going to not going to damage you in that way. That's what I don't quite under. Because by the way. If tomorrow it was announced that Man United have breached and the Glazers have messed up and we're getting a points deduction, I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest because my owners are awful. That's the only thing I don't quite understand is if they're bad at everything else, 
why are they going to get that bit right when all the financial experts say that that area seems more like Armageddon than anywhere else in your club? Um, for me, honestly, a part of it is just copium, if I'm being honest with you. Just knowing, uh, them being I, respect, into our I team, respect that. I respect that a lot, bro. Truth, you know, they, they came in our team and the main things they were pressing on, and the reason why the, the fans had a disconnect with the ownership from the very beginning is because they kept highlighting sustainability, profits, bringing in young players, flipping the money, using our academy to flip money, etc., etc. That was the main thing they drilled into the fan base. So I... At the very, it is it is hopium at the end of the day, but I would like to believe you're a private equity firm. You you're addressing the financial that everything that you've done in terms of getting rid of the experienced players, bringing in younger players, lowering the low, the wage bill, etc., which has hindered us as a club performance wise. I would like to think there's a silver lining behind why we're doing this. That's CB. CB. I need to. You you don't remember this? Do you know it was big banks and private equity firms that sent the whole world into financial Armageddon. This is the thing, right? This, as, exactly. much as, they should know, as much as they should know what they're doing, they have a long history, these types of organisations of, I mean, I'm going to quote, they'll be here. They, they're they ambitious, but their ambition, they, their eyes can sometimes be too big for their bellies. And I, honestly, if I was a Chelsea fan, it's great you guys have sent letters in about the ticket prices, but your supporters' trust should be demanding conversations about FFP demanding conversations about these these investigations because look i think lb you wrote it read it out the other day and i was a fair play to lb on this because he included city in it that that line why don't i hand it over to you actually you'll probably explain it better than me that line inside the documentation on forest's um hearing was, was is, is is loud isn't it really yeah, yeah, yeah. So it said in the in the Nottingham Forest hearing, right? And again, you've got to ask yourself why have they put this in the Nottingham Forest hearing? But they said, um, where where a breach is described as major, then it may be the case that even a very severe sanction such as expulsion is appropriate. You, you've got to ask yourself the question, why have they put that in the Nottingham Forest thing? I look at it, right, and go, well, hang on a minute. Financial experts are telling uh, financial experts are telling us that Chelsea have got a two hundred million pound black hole. They've got to sort that out by June the thirtieth. The players that you've mentioned, I ain't gonna lie, I wouldn't want any of your players. I'm pretty sure Rory and Tom probably wouldn't want it either. So I'm who's gonna pay know. that money? Then you had the then you had the point that Rory made earlier about can teams actually buy them, bro? I I, I think you could be in trouble, man. And by the way, that goes for City as well. I'm I'm quite happy to accept that. But I think Chelsea are in serious shit, bro. Two hundred mil. <laughs> As well with Chelsea, their model is flawed in the basis that on paper, yes, it looks like a money-making model. You bring in young players, they play, they go up in value, you sell on. That doesn't include all the variables, such as injuries, such as overall team performance, which affects a player's value, such as, in their case, they've sold a lot of the experienced players. Who do these players, who do these young players who need to develop and look up to someone turn to? But an OAP Thiago Silva, who is now doing more damage for Chelsea when he plays than good. And Raheem Sterling, who is routinely getting booed by his own fans. That is the experience in the dressing room. Thiago Silva. Thiago Silva is currently being ostracized by the team, from the team, due to his wife after the Wolves game, after the battering 4-2 at home. Even when that happened, I'll stay, I'll stay to the end. It was getting booze all around. Half time we're losing. With the booing at halftime, they'd done the Chinese New Year thing that didn't wasn't received well. They also were promoting Barbie or not Barbie, sorry. Uh, I think the Bob Marley movie at the time in the stadium. Thiago Silva's wife, Bell Silva, tweeted, change needs to be made. Since she made that tweet, it went viral, it popped off. He has not played a minute for us. The reason I looked at that tweet and I saw it as Bell Silva, by the way, don't get it wrong, she's proper chills. I've been to the Champions League away games and seen her on an easy jet, in an easy jet with all her kids sitting with the fans. Partying with us, having a laugh, singing the songs, knowing the chants. So she's proper Chels, don't get it wrong. But she was talking about the ownership. That's how I looked at that tweet. She wasn't talking mm. about the managerial situation. She's been there. She's seen the Abramovich stuff. He's the only... Exp Bar only Thiago Silva and Sterling are the only two players to have 250 league appearances in the whole squad. None of them do. Mm. And, now you've is, and now you've ostracized him from the team. So that exactly. means you have... like you know. So that's what we're saying. Yeah. Chelsea's self-damaging themselves. And when we say things like um, Clearwater or Blue Coal, well, they're, they're equity company, the financial equity company, they know what they're doing. Dude, Silicon Valley Bank closed last year. Third largest bank failure in the history of America. That is a massive bank. Like, this is a bank. 
that they closed, shut down, gone, poof, in the air. So you have to realize that these things can happen to the best of people. You know, no, yeah, I, I, I agree. LB, I want to throw a tweet out to you. This is one of the tweets that someone connected into us earlier about potentially being kicked out of the league. Uh, this tweet was from a City fan. It says, I know I'll be in the minority, but I'd effing love it. One last dance, a few of the old stomping grounds from the good old days. Almost advocating that he wouldn't mind being kicked out of the Premier League as a City fan and 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 going back down to Plymouth and et cetera. Do you, do you advocate that? Would you, would you Are you joining him on, on, on his road trip to Devon? Well, well, yeah, no, I mean, I, I would rather not be kicked out of the Premier League, to be honest with you. I quite enjoy winning the treble. But um, listen, I know I know a lot of old school City fans, you know what I mean, who followed City when we are in the lower divisions, who, who, who don't, you know, proper football fans who don't follow clubs for just success, right? They, they follow mm. the club because they enjoy going to the football at the weekend. They're not asked who you're playing. You know what I mean? They're not asked whether you're playing at Real Madrid or or Burnley away. Like, they just like following the club. So I know loads of City fans. I'm sure all fan bases have it. Me personally, though, I, I would, I would rather be playing in the Champions League and playing at the at the, at the high stages. But listen, I think I think there's a lot of people who are not that arse. because a lot of people, Terry, that are just like saying yeah. they just enjoy watching football, don't they? They don't really care. Yeah, like, would like, you support? Would you stop supporting United if they got relegated? Or you still support them? Like, no, no, or, I, I, I would definitely, I definitely would do it. I think the way it's worded, like I'm well up for this. I I, I don't agree with being well up for it. Like, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't yeah, yeah. want Man United to get relegated, but I wouldn't stop supporting them. And, and it, it's one of the reasons that the last 10 years has been awful for us. But the good thing about it is I think that it's good for certain fan bases to go through times of trouble or not always having the glory. Cause it makes you, it makes you appreciate it more when you win. I'm telling you that now. And um, so a lot of the older United fans that I met when I lived in Manchester, they they went through the, the the late they went through the seventies and the eighties and they used to tell me stories and I never believed them. <laughs> no, it weren't that bad, was it? And then you you go through it yourself and you're like, Jesus Christ, it's terrible. But um, yeah, look, lots to unpack when it comes to that. We've got some super chats here to do. Uh, first one says, uh, if your Chelsea trophies got stripped for cheating, would you still say Roman ran the club properly? Um. Yeah, yes, yes, definitely. Because honestly, the truth is the moments for football is a moment sport, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, I love like the fact that we we had the 2012, the Allianz, you know, that we had wars with Barcelona, we've had wars, we've gone to Real Madrid and dunked them. We've been 3 1 down, got first leg, going to Bonnebau and being 3 0 up. Like, them type of feelings, them moments we, we had as a club, you can't take that away from us. We, we need to remember, we, we got sold for one pound. We, so, we, so, in, so, in your opinion, CB. Lance Armstrong is still the greatest Tour de France guy ever. I mean, he lived it. He can tell people at the end of the day, you know, he can, if ever it's, it's authentic or not, he can tell people, I did this. No one's taken that away from him. You know what I'm trying to say? No, no, they, they literally did take it away from him. <laughs> no, he, he has those moments. That's what I'm saying to you. But know? does he have those moments? If you say in Bolt, if it turn, I pray to God it doesn't happen, love Bolt. If... I'll do a better word. Mo, uh, Mo Farad is in, that's English, British. Yeah. If it turned out he was taking drugs for all those gold medals he won, would you, as, a, as a, you know, still look at him in the same way as a as a legendary athlete? No, but it's different, though. I understand. Well, do you know what, Terry? Terry, there is plenty of cases. Yeah. If it was a thing where you told me, oh, Drogba and Lampard were on steroids for for the what, Champions League runs, and that fair enough. This is this is outside of our hands. The performances were there. Did you get what I'm saying? But with a team that the th potentially shouldn't have been built. Yeah, the, the thing is, Terry. Though you know, I, I was just gonna say the thing what? is with that, like, just like I, I do agree with CB a little, and I, I I hold the same sentiment for if it was City because. The fans went through the moments. We watched the football. You have those memories and you can't take away the feelings that you felt during that moment. And you're always going to have that. Whether they take it away technically, just like you said, that there's plenty of players. Like Rio Ferdinand got done for doping. Like there's, no, there's players. That, yeah, he did. He got he got banned. Did he not get, well, he didn't get for done doping. for doping? He got done for missing a drugs test, but took the drugs test a day later and passed it. He didn't get done for doping. But still, people. All right, we'll take where we are further. Yeah. We'll go to you other cases. Right, 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 wait, 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 Terry. I am Maradona. I am Pogba. John Jones, one of the greatest ever, still gets regarded as the greatest fighter ever, mm -hmm. and he's he's been done for doping. It just happens sometimes. Obviously, some people are going to hold that against him and say you can't be because you cheated, and they will say the same thing about Chelsea mm -hmm. and same thing about City. But then some people are also going to go, 
we watched the fight or we watched the moments, we watched it play out. You can't take that away from him. And I, I sort of agree with CB. Like you, you're, you're talking, you're talking, you're talking about moments and you're talking about memories and that and that lives with the fans and the people. We're talking about the law and authorities when they turn around and take away your trophies and they remove them from you because that year you you were attributed to have cheated, which simply means. If you had five trophies and they take away three, you now have two on the record, according to the books. You can have the memory of the other three, but you don't have those trophies anymore. The bottom That's line fine, is... Though. No, no, no. I'm not saying... Nobody's saying it's not fine. What we're saying is they're two different things. If you want to talk about memories and moments, we can all live in memories and moments of what our clubs have done at great times. But if we're going to talk about breaking laws and getting penalized for it, for example, Lance Armstrong, his medals were taken away. He doesn't have the most wins anymore on the record books. He has the memories of it, but he doesn't have the medals to prove it. And that's the bottom line. So at the end of the day, if they turn around and take away your trophies in those years for cheating, you can live with the great memories of Eden Hazard dribbling all the Arsenal players and scoring a goal. But that trophy that year is gone. I that's what I'm saying. It's gone technically, no, no, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not bitterness. We're talking about if. We said if the penalty for the, for the punishment, if that's what it is, then you can't use memories to overshadow. There's reality. It's not in this overshadowing. Thing. No, no, listen. Right? There's, hold on. There's, let's see. There's reality, and there's 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 reality, and there's you know creating moments. I love the moments that Arsenal has created for me at the club. But the reality is, I have no trophy to to prove it in the last twenty years. No EPL. But I love some of the games we have played. But there's nothing to prove it. That's the difference. You see what I'm saying? It's the same way. If you win and they found out that you cheated and they take the trophy from you, you can live in the memories of how great the team was. But that trophy is gone, is all I'm saying. And you have to accept that. That's just normal. That's, yeah. that's I, I, I actually the get, consequences. I do, I do get where George, George is coming from. It's interesting that you say that. I think in fighting, it's more widely accepted because people think that most people are doping. But even for me, like the, probably the best boxer in the world right now is Canelo. But I have no emotional feeling towards him because he's an absolute drugs cheat. I used to love Conor Ben. I don't anymore. I'm, I'm like, mm, I'm not asked whether he wins or loses. And maybe that's just me. And how I am with these things. Once somebody's cheated, I don't, I don't view them in the same. Like I, I don't view them in the same way. And for me, if, if, it, if, if a report come out tomorrow that turned out Fergie was legitimately bunging referees in the nineties and the noughties, like everyone suggests he was, and it turns out we paid our paid referees to help us win our trophies, I'm not going to sit here and give the bullshit of I, I lived there, I still had the memories. No, those memories become tarnished. And we've all done something in our lives where we've slightly cheated. Could be on a computer game, could be on a test, it could be on a woman, whatever it may be. <laughs> Unless you're an absolute psychopath, nobody feels good at the end of it. Nobody goes, nobody in their heart of hearts sits there like, oh, I got 100% on this test, I'm a genius. You're sitting there going, yeah, I got 100%, I hope no one finds out I cheated, because it doesn't feel the same. And it, and, and, and I've said it before, I, I think it's one of those, I think it's very easy for any of us to sit there and say, if, the, if our club's records were taken away, that we would still feel the same as we do now. I think in reality, on those cold, lonely, dark nights, I think it would I think it would genuinely hurt. Because at the end of the day, the memories are there, but that's what's going to hurt. Your memory's there, but it's gone officially. You can't sit there. LB can't sit there and go, well, I've got a treble. Because you don't, bruv, if it, if it was taken away. You know, we don't know. But with Chelsea's look, we'll see um, the, 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 what, the, what the investigation brings out. It was a great just, super chat. Great segue, question. Yeah? Just before we segue, just the, the championship point, yeah? The only good games that Enzo's had with us this season have been Preston, Middlesbrough second leg. We had the Aston Villa FA Cup replay. And uh, we played Wimbledon. So I'm not too bad. If it looks like we're going to finally see these world-class performances from Enzo Fernandez, bring on the championship. I don't mind, man. I hear you. Uh, this here says a uh, hilarious uh, Chelsea fan, CB, a prime example, still thinks that dozens of eight year contracts were a stroke of genius, even though they are proving to be failure on and off the pitch. Reason nobody did did them is what Faddy says. Uh, I definitely don't agree with this. I hate the fact that we're stuck with these players for eight years. Don't get it twisted, yeah. but I just, it's more than more to say. The more to say, I hear you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you think uh, there will be a retrospective punishment? Uh, but what, uh, what that I mean, for example, redistribution of the trophies? Most probably not, especially not the cup competitions. Because how how do you work that out? Because say it's City and the Champions League, they knocked everybody out pretty much. They played, so who gets it? it, it it's hard to say. The league potentially, but. I doubt it. I very much doubt anybody anybody would get it. And it would have to be severe cheating for anyone to lose these trophies as well, by the way. 
Uh, rivals already already think we are guilty and don't acknowledge our trophies. Couldn't care less uh, how they feel. Uh, would KDB ch- would wouldn't change anything? Uh, but look, I, I think it's fair. Look, listen, I'm I'm someone who respects what Chelsea uh, City have done to a degree, but I understand why pe- when there's an allegation sitting there. Now, there's an allegation over a, a hundred meter sprinter that he's been doping, and he's still and he's at the Olympic and he wins. A lot of people would cheer, but there'll still be a lot of people going. But I want to know whether he's cheated or not first. It, it is normal to feel like that, like if you if you're not a City fan. But to be fair, uh, first it's a, a ban them. Uh, it's fine now. Terry is claiming trophies will be taken away. I didn't say the trophies would be taken away. It was a super chat. So. Uh, What's the show? I didn't say Super Chat said it, and when we had a discussion about it, because we're respecting the Super Chat like we're respecting yours, DJ. Uh, without Silver, uh, we actually play better as a team. Haven't lost in 90 minutes since his exclusion. Do you know, the, the, I hate that, because the most important game that we we played was the Carabao Cup final, where he wanted playing, and we subbed on Chalabar. The two games, we had, we had Man City... Um, after Anfield, we had Man City. It was one 0 up. In my opinion, I think we should have we should have went we should have won that game. But Pochettino got too he got scared a bit and decided to throw on bare defenders. He subbed on Chalabar. We conceded. Same again. Same in the Carabao Cup final. Within five minutes, he subs on Chalabar. We concede. If Thiago Silva was back there, I'm sure he'd be marking Van Dijk. And that just reminded me about that Carabao Cup. So <laughs> no, but I, all you do then was just put the sassy at fullback. So Ch- Chalabar would come on at fullback. You'd then, if you had Thiago Silva, bring Thiago Silva on and put Axel de Zassi at fullback, who was less mobile. And what last time he played yeah, at fullback was against there. us, and we had so there. much joy against them. So you can't really win. Thiago mm-hmm. Silva, I, yeah, I, Thiago Silva was a great defender, but I do he's, agree, now though, he's, been, yeah, he's now yeah, too, I agree, slow like, too slow for it. Like, yeah, I, I hear you guys. I just want to try and get through these super chats before we get to the next point. If your Chelsea trophies got stripped for cheating, would you say? Okay, already done that super chat. I apologize. Uh, DJ, that was a super chat, DJ. It weren't me. Um, Liverpool uh, is, are interested in Rodrigo. He's already made contact with Real Madrid. Rodrigo will cost... Yeah, Rod- Rodrigo's not leaving for anybody. I touched on this on the transfer video. Man United also linked to him. It's just one plus one equals 37 because then Mbappe's going. He'll be available. He won't be year one, in my opinion. Uh, Kieran Maguire and um, Bronson uh, said last year we would foul yet the accounts make... Yeah. They said that because um, nobody knew that you were putting the transfers from the summer into last year. So you you, you made it just about. But mm-hmm. the Mason Mount si- uh, sale, et cetera, it was briefed into the media. This was going into this year's accounts, but it went into last year's accounts. And so there was mis- some miscommunication there. And so that's why there's a bigger black hole for this year. This so year, people, e- yes. people expected you to fail last year. You didn't fail because you put stuff in that we all thought was going to be in for this year, last year. But that's now created a bigger gap for this year. And that's why and people are worried. And your income's even smaller this 12 months than the last 12 months. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that, that's why, my friend. Uh, I own a company, want to go all in uh, on a new strategy. It might not work and we might go bankrupt, but I'm ambitious. Imagine everyone did that. <laughs> I, I get where LB's coming from. There's just got to be checks and balances on that sort of stuff. Reason why Chelsea's owners had to accelerate. Oh, sorry, already done that super chat as well. Uh, everyone explained in their own words. Not everyone isn't doing this. We'll be here for another hour in their own words. While why Bruno is a bad captain and what he is doing differently from everyone else. I'll throw that to LB. Um, attitude, leadership, non-existent. Um, doesn't work hard enough. Um, doesn't just a general sort of like dives and stuff. I would just say just an all round bad captain. He's like, I mean, he's you're, like you're, you're, you're a nice man, oral. Like, if you think he's a good captain, then fair dues. You're, you're that's not my opinion. That, that Here we go. Uh, I watched Potter and Troops earlier. Who's Potter? You mean Lee Gunner? Uh, never again after my super chat was ignored and troops referred to women as bitches. I enjoy listening to a variety of channels, but I won't support that. Listen, I've always gotten very well with, um, with, with, with troops, horses for courses and everything else. I appreciate you being here, my friend. Um, thank you very much indeed. Um, I thought Don and Ches talked waffle, but it seems like it's just a Chelsea thing. Why is he on the show? They don't even know. They're not even in the top half. Listen, just- we'll be back. That's what I'm going to say. We'll be back. Enjoy it now, innit? 
Chelsea have zero heritage. You were nothing before Roman, and you're nothing after. News: We won. We always we had a European Cup Winners' Cup, 1997. Oh, nice. oh, oh, oh! You had a European Cup Winners' Cup. Oh, it matters now. I, Chelsea. I you, matter. Oh my God! I didn't realize <laughs> I that when I didn't realize that when Arsenal won it in 1994, it didn't matter. But in 1997, it, it did. Matter. I just said I'm we not, got. Just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We are going to move on. Uh, I guess. He fears Nottingham Forest too because they have two Champions League trophies. Clueless is what Wayne says here. Uh, if Chelsea and City are found to be cheating, expect massive lawsuits from individual Premier League clubs who didn't get into the Champions League. Yeah, I mean, that also could happen. There's so there's a massive, massive, That's massive... I feel like Chelsea and City will be punished severely as well because the fallout with it is too much... It's going to be too much for the Premier League and even UEFA and so forth to handle. Just- yeah, it could be. But at the same time, they're coming so hard down now on this, on teams. So they're not punish you. They'll find themselves in even more trouble with things. It's, it's a hard one. I, I get like, from a Chelsea point of view, people think that. But I, I would listen, the way they're talking, the way they're wording things, I think they're coming out with teeth. Uh, ain't no way you can fault Bruno's effort, leadership qualities lacking, but never efforts. Yeah, but does, uh, LB, does, is Bruno's call, effort good or is it just I, I be, busy? No, I think his effort is good. It's a, it's a system after time. I will defend Bruno in that capacity. Uh, we had another a question that was sent in earlier on today. And it's this. Uh, England's best 11. Everybody being fit who's in the current squad. What's England's best 11? I know Saka's also just been... By the way, viewers, view, Saka has now been sent home along with... You know, the, the Harlands and the uh, Darwin Nunezes of this world for the title race. But England's best 11, Rory. What, what are you saying? Who's got to be, who's got to be in it? Uh, I think in terms of got to be in it, I think you go Pickford and goal, definitely. You go in John Stones. Um, the rest of the back four, I think, is up for debate. And then you go in Rice, Bellingham, Foden, Saka, Kane. So I think the the left wing is maybe up for debate, depending on where you put Foden and how deep you play Bellingham. There's a midfield spot that could go up for someone. And then, yeah, most of the back four, I think, is up for debate. So in terms of the back four, I I don't want him at Man United anymore, but I have to say Maguire, because he don't put a foot wrong for England. I, I feel like he has to be in the team, Maguire, personally, even though there's been people that have maybe played better in the Premier League than him. But for England, that man is just consistent, consistent, consistent. I might be wrong. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I, I agree. And the competition isn't that great either, is it? That's the thing, yeah. The the, the only competition there is based on form, I don't think has, has enough experience for England to actually take the spot. Yeah, but even but even when he plays against other countries, though, he's always, he's, he plays, he plays, like the Maguire you see for England, it's always shocking when you see him back in the league, like two weeks later, you're like, like, are you, is he a twin? They need to go check. He might be a twin. Maguire might be too. I just feel like a place for I think international suits him a bit better because he's yeah, the game's think, a bit yeah. slower. It's played a bit slower. You can read it mm. a bit more. Like it, it, it's much slower pace, so he looks like a better player because he can read the game well. I think the problem that he has with the Premier League is just it, the ball moves too quick for him, and he finds himself being a last man trying to defend like a a Haaland or someone. He's just going to breeze past him. He's going to make a stupid challenge. But Maguire is one hundred percent in that back line and. He, whether we like it or not, he, he's like the guaranteed starter for that team out of anyone. Mm. I do think he's better fit, yeah, but I don't think he's the best one. I, I, I say if it was up to me, I wouldn't be starting him because I think there's better English. And I, I'd be looking at Brant Fleet from Evan. I think he's been brilliant this season. I think him yeah. and Stones would be a, a superb partnership. Mm. I, I, I think just don't think there's time. The game really well. I, I just yeah. don't think there's time to bet him in. Before the tournament, Def- that's the problem. Defenders, defenders are a hard one. It's I think you can the further up the pitch you go, you can throw a bit of a a wild card in. The, 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 lower down the pitch, it needs to be someone that's got that experience at international level. The the big one for me, le- left back, probably right now. I mean, Shaw's out. So it's, oh, is it Ben Chilwell? I mean, I can't think of anyone else who's going to play there. Joe Gomez. I put Joe, Joe Gomez, Gomez on the mid- team. We just Joe Gomez, Gomez actually, he's been very good at left back. To be fair, mm-hmm. other than when he come up against United, I, I think the, you'd only other options like Tino Livramento as well. But Southgate's shown before that he's played Trippier left back in yeah. the World Cup. Mm-hmm. So and I, he's, he's been horrendous this year, though. He's, he's been horrendous in his natural position. I wouldn't exactly want him out of position now. now I agree, mm. but you know Southgate has his favourites. He has the people that no matter what are going to make the squad, the, the Hendersons. You know what I'm saying. Probably going to be Gomez or Chilwell, really. 
right back who plays right back Carl Walker I would yeah. assume yeah Walker yeah. has to play I've, I've said this about Walker and Trent in the past that Trent is in my opinion I just can't pick yeah. him for a knockout tournament I just don't think he's good enough defensively and, and, and the other question you have do you really need Trent's attacking abilities when you've got Foden Bellingham Saka and then ever plays left I just think it's overkill like I've said it before just so the Liverpool fans don't kill me like in the Premier League, I'm taking Trent because over a 38-game season, I think he'd be better than Walker. But in a knockout game, Champions League, World Cup, Euros, I'm taking Walker. He's just better defensively. I agree. If if Rhys James was fit, would you guys consider him? No, if Rhys James was fit, I, I would say he's my number one choice. I, I why why would you one. pick him over Walker, though? I don't get that. I was just about to get on to that. Um, Walker's this season has been a bit shaky. Um, I don't feel like he's been... Obviously, he's getting older. So, naturally, as the years go on, he's going to, like digress a bit more and get a bit worse and you're going to see him lose that little bit of pace but I feel like he's just getting beat a bit too easy um, this season he's finding himself out of position he's relying on that recovery pace but that recovery pace isn't it's not doing the same job that it used to do so for me I feel like Reese James just a more all-round defender of course if he was fit uh, he if he got fit before the end of the season it's still it would be too late anyway but if he was fit I just think Reese James is just all round, he's still young. He, he's got the forward. He can go forward. He can bring it back. Mm. Um, solid on the ball, off the ball. I, Reece James all rounds. Uh, uh, I, 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 I rate Reece James, but I wouldn't trust right now. I wouldn't he, even if he's fit today. I wouldn't risk taking him to a tournament because the body's made of biscuits, and I think it's mm. you know one 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 sprint too many, and the the body breaks, and that's that's Reece James's because I think Reece James is the best of both worlds defensively excellent great on the ball but he just can't stay fit his hamstrings look ruined to me he's, he's built I, like I, he's built like a tank and his his muscles can't take the the weight and, and you can tell like the way he's he's a strong lad and very very talented very, very similar fast. to luke shaw very very yeah. similar body build to luke shaw to be fair and they both get a lot of injury problems yeah built like a tank that I'm, put I'm a lot of pressure on that body though. yeah yeah I'm surprised Dio and Rory didn't throw Ben. I know obviously Ben White has his problems with Southgate, but I thought just for like best eleven, I'm surprised he used to oh, throw him in there. But, no, I mean... Ben White, Ben White would be the right back in the best eleven, in my opinion, at the moment. But he's just yeah, he's not. His I'm, choice I mean, is it, not to go. So, okay. in, in an England best eleven, you hire a manager that doesn't play such a rigid system, and then you try and invert people. And you try and get dominance in midfield, and then that's where Trent could maybe fit in. Uh, but we know you got to bear in mind when you're selecting your best eleven, you got to bear in mind who your gaffer is. That's why I, I went well. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I wasn't exactly going to go. Well, no, we might go Trent. I've never. We, I don't we, think Trent's we, played it right back for him. It's all fun we, and games yeah, until Southgate does a back five with with. Henderson. I know, I know. Is I, is Foden playing in midfield or is he going on that left hand side? I did that. On the left. I can't come in the middle, man. I, I, I don't think in the middle. Be in the middle. I don't think I'd so want him, I'd I'd want him in the middle. We need a runner and an outlet. That's the thing. I, I'd, I'd want him in the is... middle, but I think Southgate likes the Foden Saka wing dynamics too much. And I think he wants. He, he, I, I think Southgate would panic if he had to have Foden and Bellingham in the same midfield. I think he likes to have someone who, who he, in his mind, is a little bit more secure defensively. I in just there. feel like when you play with Kane up front, you need someone that's going to run in behind. Saka yeah, yeah, doesn't yeah. really. He, that's not his strength. He doesn't really like making those like last runs in behind. And in the last World Cup and the last Euros you watched, it was either Sterling or Rashford doing that job. And although they don't perform to the highest level at all points, I feel like you need that profile of player, which they both are, mm -hmm. in the team. You can't play with either with neither of them in the team because you're going to have Saka, Foden, both inverting, coming inside, cutting in, trying to make something happen. And then Kane drops back. Kane's not going to stay forward and do the striker job that England need him to do all the time. That's just not in his nature. So if you have Sterling making the runs in behind, Rashford making the runs in behind, then Kane also plays those passes. So yeah, but, 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 Kane, but this season, but this but, season but, Saka has done, this season Saka has done more of actually going all the way to the end and cutting the ball back inside instead of cutting inside. He's, he's I just mean making, but he's not going to make the run over the last man though. He will do that with the ball at his feet, but he's not going to. Yeah, he's not going to. He's enough. not going to drop in and, and Saka make the run over. He's not going to make the overlap. Mm. Fair enough. Yo, Charles, the one thing I'd say on that is though, you don't need Kane to drop in if you've got Bellingham and Foden. You don't need to, but that's what Kane does. That's that's. Yeah, what tell him not to do that. You're the manager yeah. of the team. You know what I mean? You're meant to kick guy. Kane done six years of not of not dropping in and being a playmaker. He can do it for six games and just go sit in the box. If anything, it should be better for him to just sit in the box and wait for. Or to create for them. Yeah, mm -hmm. the only issue for me is 
if, if Foden goes left and Jude Belling goes in the middle behind Kane, the actual issue I think is then who plays alongside Rice? I don't think we've got a decent like. I don't think Maynou has got the experience as much as I think he should be in the squad. I feel like a Ross Bond Jones. I, I, I personally, I, I personally see Trent in a pivot with Rice. I think that could work. You know where it's going to be, you, don't you, boys? You know where it's going to be. We all know on this <laughs> panel who it's going to be. <laughs> oh, not <laughs> <Henry>. <laughs> it's not but we all it know will be Henderson. Henderson. Yeah, it's going to be Henderson. For me, I, I get what you're I, I've never, seen, I would, I've never like seen Southgate see... go watch some foreign games. Like, no, and he, he's been at all the Ajax ones. He's been so I desperate would... to watch him. I'll I say would... Barkley or Roloftus Cheek could do a better job than Henderson in mm. the, as an eight, though. Yeah, I mean, they probably would now do a better job than him. I, I mean, I look at it this way. I would use these friendlies to give... I, I would use it to test Maynou. I would Because I think if you look at Maynou's ability, him next to Rice with Bellingham ahead, that's why I would put Foden out on that left-hand side for me personally, because as good as he is, what we we don't have a midfielder like like Maynou. There isn't anyone that can do what he does, but the experience issue is is there. A few people said to me yesterday about playing like Madison in central midfield. And I'm like, Madison plays in Bellingham's position. You look at the heat maps, he's an attacking midfield player. I don't want him deep, and that's not a diss at Madison. Madison, he's an attacking midfield player, but we need... Yeah, it's, it's almost a bit like Drew Bellingham a few years ago. It's almost like this tournament's come a little bit too early maybe for Maynou, but I think he's legit. I actually think... That's why I want to see him given the chance because I think he can prove in these couple of games that he can handle the pressure. I actually, I think he's one of those youngsters and they come along every now and then. You've, you've had it with Saka, you've had it with Rooney as an example. Foden was the same. I think Harry Kane, he was a little bit older when he came through, but I think just, I think he'll handle it. He, he's been thrown into games at Anfield as an 18 year old with no experience and being the only player that's walked out looking like a football player. And I don't think there'll be any where anywhere near as much pressure as uh, he'll face in an England team this year as there is going away to Anfield as a Man United player making your third start. The 2026, the 2026, 2026, 2026 World Cup, watch out for him. That kid is yeah, going to go. Yeah, he's, 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 watch out for him. Watch out for him. This year was a lot of people's last tournament at very high yeah. level. That's why I said watch out for him in the World Cup. This Euros, he's yeah. probably going to make he, the team. Be, I think he's got to be there for the experience, give him some game time. But I'd like to yeah. see him. I'd like to see him play in these friendlies anyway. And then... um. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I remember. What looks like. How do you guys feel about Cole Palmer? Mm. Who? I, I not think enough experience. Cole Palmer. He, he's not. He's not even in the conversation for me to even be a star or even on. Like, there's so many players in his position that are better than him that he needs to be uh, like s acceptable, like so so good to even replace them. Like, he's got Foden, Bellingham, Madison. Uh, and if you want, that's just in the cam. If he wants to go out wide, then he's got a bunch of more players, four or five that's ahead of him. Although he's had a very good season, he's going to need another two or three good seasons like that to even be considered to go ahead. Yeah, because I would say, like, you in, in the middle, like, number one and number two is Bellingham followed by Madison in terms of that kind of number okay. 10 role. On on the right, I mean, you could argue he could be behind Saka, but then it depends who else is on the pitch because Foden could go into that position. As much as he's not had a great year, again, the one thing, and, and I do advocate for this, is Jim, like, for Rashford in the last two or three years for England has been good. And Same he'll be he'll be in that team. And Rashford's one of our, of our only players who out wide will play on the shoulder of a fullback and spread the play with his pace. And sometimes you just need someone making those runs to help everyone. So what he might end up doing is playing Rashford on the left and Foden in the middle. That that right. could end up that could end up being what he if, does as well. If he gets over his injuries as well, Grealish. I, I think Grealish has always got to be an option. I, I like Grealish for England. I like him. I, I prefer I, him for England than I do for City. I, I, I can't good. see Cole Palmer getting in the midfield. The thing is, if you're playing Jude Bellingham. You don't want anyone else to get in his way in the midfield. Bellingham should just be given the license. He's uh, he he could win a Ballon d'Or this year. You want to? You don't want someone yeah. else trying we, to get in the way and trying we, to. Take we the need ball to not make. We need to not make the same mistake we did with with Scholes, Gerard, Lampard. First of all, you play the better of the. You play the first of all, you play the better of the three in in, in Scholes, and then what you don't want to do is is keep trying to play Gerard and Lampard together in the modern day era where they get in each other's way because it's like someone said we play Madison and Bellingham together. You actually look at the last three or four years heat maps of them two players. They pick up the same pockets. They go into the same spaces. They are the same. They don't play in the same way on the eye, but they're in the same spaces. And you, we need that balance where we, not everybody's doing the same thing. But again, that's what we're saying. Southgate, <laughs> you never know where that geezer. Do you know what I mean? 
I, um, I just think Trent would be such an interesting option in that midfield alongside Bellingham and, he, and Rice. He, he could I, be. I, I think that passing be. range and the creativity. Yeah, you'd, you'd I, be I, asking I, an awful lot of Rice. Rice. Don't get me wrong. Declan Rice would be doing a lot of running on his it. own. Yeah. But in, in terms of just, I, I, I don't like the idea that a lot of England fans think you should be set up like defensive midfield. We go into this tournament as arguable favourites, if not second favourites. Why are we second. trying to set up to be pessimistic in every game? We can dominate teams. We've got the players to beat teams four, five, six. Let's actually go and do it instead of going, well, if we get a little bit of luck, we can, you know, grab a 1-0 or a 2-0 and then we go through yeah. to the next round. No, I, no, hear, I hear that. You're making statements with strong teams. I've got, I got another question on the pros, but this is just from uh, uh, Alex. He says, Terry obsessed with cheating, absolute weapon. <laughs> um, Alex, I just need, I'm sorry she's told you. Sorry, bruv. So I'm gonna sorry, bruv. I'm sorry it's come out. Um <laughs> <laughs> sorry she told you tonight of all nights, my man. But thanks for tuning in still. Um <laughs> a question: why do you guys think Southgate never picks uh Sean Wright Phillips? Not Sean Wright, Sean Wright Phillips. Um <laughs> is your prowess. Oh. My dyslexia kicked me right in there. He's retired, I think. Um, James Ward Prowse, uh, but keeps picking Mr. Have who's ball, who's ball, Hendo. Not even a favorite because he's not even a favorite. Why are we acting like Gareth Southgate doesn't have favorites? No, There's a reason the why I cannot rule out Calvin Phillips from this. Look, I'll say, I'll say this there was a time where I, I, Henderson was better than than than, than, than Ward Prowse, there was, but doing it now is crazy. but Shame for Ward Prowse that suddenly you get someone you, you suddenly get like I know he's injured, so he, he, I think Curtis Jones would be there if he wasn't injured. Suddenly Curtis Jones starts playing really well, and you get the emergence of Mainu, and he, he just missed his chance and opportunity. But yeah, it's just a favorite. Getting in the eight as well it's Gallagher as well. Don't be surprised if Gallagher gets. Um, oh man, please! I think yeah, Gallagher right. has a good shout, and he would actually yeah. be all right in the team. Profile, the way he I ain't watching it if he plays international football. <laughs> come on, LB! Come on, LB! <laughs> Do you know? No, nah, I mean, I'm actually not joking, man. You're telling me we've got players like Rice, Foden, Bellingham, Madison, and you're way to have a conversation you just, about Conor Gallagher. In them, so four midfielders, we've got one six in Rice, and then we've got <clears> a bunch <throat> of tens. Gallagher is one of the few eights. Gallagher's played eight. as a ten this season. We just be asking him to. He has, but let's let's be honest though. His strengths lie in being an eight, and I actually yeah. think like like CB was no, about no, to. No, no, his strengths. Gallagher's strengths are athletics. We need to stop doing. Yeah, we need to stop picking players based on the fact they have sprinters. At, you know, oh, they run far. Oh, they got good stamina. I don't it's want to find any midfield. I need football. The Gergen press. Yeah, yeah. I, I had to deal with Jordan Henderson doing it for four years. I don't no, like it. I, I, I got midfield you. quality now. I, 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 I've one, seen the lights. One other question that was sent through today, guys, just for the end. Of, so it was uh, who has the hardest fixtures in the title race, and could it be Spurs that caused the tipping point? That's from Ray Ray. Official, who has the hardest running in the remainder of the title race? I think it's Arsenal. Probably I think Arsenal, no, yeah. now Arsenal fans probably know that themselves as well. With the, I, I see they've had they've had a couple games rescheduled as well. That's just making their fixtures even harder. So I think they're gonna. It's gonna be tough. It's a lot. Of Mark my words, we're going to end Arsenal season. I remember uh, I told you this. Uh, we're gonna end their season. We do it every time when it's when it's when it's time for, to just we're not in the title race and we have a reason to just ruin things for people. We'll Tottenham, do it. Tottenham fans, we're gonna end our snow season. Chelsea fans, we're gonna end our snow season. We'll be here. We're waiting for you. Um, you you know what's Wait, funny? We keep that same energy after the games, yeah. though. Don't come here and cry and no, say, no, 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 we had to play these games. I, 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 injuries. See, see, no, see, look, see, hold on. I told you. I told you with. Look, with, with El Nani on the pitch, we'll beat you. With El Nani. That's how you slash you guys are. <laughs> I, I remember, I remember so when you I remember when you guys yeah, done that. I told you came that. No, no, no. And, and we beat no, no, you 3 no, no. So I, No, no, I'll no. Remember. Last season, last season, last season, you beat me last season. Even, even, no, even though even, no, 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 I'm talking the most recent season of last season, even when oh, no, last we, season even, when, work, even when we had injuries and we fell out. Who won? Who won? Who won? Say it again. I said last season was our Wait. worst ever season in 15 years, so I don't need to reference. Oh, oh okay. All right. Oh, oh you don't need to. Re season. You don't need to reference your most recent. I'll go back to the season where we were But decent. you want to go back to the season before where it was decent. Uh, you want to pick and choose when you beat me to be able to yeah, use that. Yeah, yeah, because you guys, were you, you guys, you guys were Chelsea. Good that year, you know? Chelsea, you've only beat me once in five in the last four or five years. So you don't talk. Don't talk. You're 11th position. Respect yourself and face your charges. 
Don't come mm -hmm. here with your yeah. We, we, uh, first, well, your charges in the long position. There. If you come to the top of the table and talk too much, you will get six zero. I'm warning you, and that will be worse for you because throughout the whole break, I will be texting you six zero every morning at six a.m. say, Dio, is we want no you excuses. Have, you have lost. Right you've lost three one. You've no, lost three one. You have lost okay, three one. Don't okay. worry. We want no excuses because as we're oh. seeing right now, all the Arsenal players are pulling out of international duty because they want to be fit for Arsenal's games. They want to have yes, those now. extra legs. All right, yes, so when I'm, all I'm, so what I'm saying is there's going to be no You don't injuries. need to tell me no excuse. We're already, we are, we are already, have no when it does fall apart, guys, 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 one, one at a time, Dio, one at, let when George it finish, fall apart, When it does fall apart, Dio, remember, we've got this clip. Say, say that again, say, say it again, say when, what, I didn't hear you, you said what? When it does, when it does fall apart, when you, when you, when all of this, your durag is, your durag is too tight, you need your head to breathe, you need hair, air. Open your window, remove the durag. I'm going to remember blow. this. We're, let's we're air, no, listen, let let's air blow your head. Is sure it when it does? Are you, are you Nostradamus? You can predict the when he, George, when you say it's all going to fall apart, are you, are you predicting Arsenal to win the league then? No, when when they fall apart from their games. Well, I never... Come on, sorry. See, you, yeah, you see, so, so hold on. Hold so, on. Hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. So, so if, where are you predicting Arsenal to come from here? Where are they going to finish in the league? Yeah. That, that's a toss up. It's going to be first to third. It's, it's, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, but what, what I mean by that is, it can, it can only it can only fall apart if the they they can only fall apart if they're expected to win. Right? It can't fall apart if they're expected to come no, third. I'm 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 what I'm saying is based off what Dio's is saying to me right now. They're going to beat Chelsea. Six they're going to beat us three one. You started they're gonna the beat all you started, of us. Wait, wait, wait. You started Dio, it, Dio, and I Dio, gave you the you, same heat. Dio, you don't like... <laughs> you started and I gave I'm you the same heat. So don't say Dio hey, let, him, heat. let him finish, please. Dio, Sorry. You love to do this thing. When I'm making a good point, you want to talk and talk and yap because you know that I'm killing you right now. Just give it a second. Like I said, when, just like when you said you're going to beat us 3-1, you'll beat us with El Nene on the pitch. You're going to beat Chelsea. All I'm saying, there's no excuses because every year we hear, last year it was, oh, this player got injured, Partey was out, Saliba was out in the key part of the season. You're not. We're not going to hear it because you would beat Tottenham with El Nene on the pitch. You'll slap Did Chelsea. Did we beat you last year or not? Did we beat you last year or not? Did we beat you last year or not? You bought the league last year too. No, 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 no. See, hey, see, see, please, please, please. I'm coming to you, Chelsea. They're eleven. Let me talk to. Let me talk to uh, fifth. You know what I mean? first. Let me talk you're, to fifth. I'll come and meet you eleven. Just stay with. Hold on. From what I'm saying. Did we beat? No, no. You said. You said. You said no. Hold on. You said no excuses last year. I said, did we beat you last year or not? And if I we go by your logic, hold on, hold on. There was no, no, excuses. We, guys, guys, the excuses, well, the time, excuses was for the excuses was for winning the league. I'm talking about beating Tottenham. That's what because, I'm talking no, about. No, no, no. I'm talking about beating Tottenham. Listen to this. There's two different conversations here. Don't mix it up. Yeah, bottling you have the, an, uh, but, no, 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 bottling the league, bottling the league. We gave excuses. Saliba injured, this injured, that injured. Yes, beating Tottenham, it didn't matter. We beat you fair and square last year. Yes or no? You're yes or no? A conversation as no, 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 no. Yes what or no? No, no. Your conversation earlier today, what you said You're was watch, no, no, no. Listen, <laughs> no, no. You said watch Arsenal lose games to Tottenham, and then Chelsea says we'll stop your, we'll end your season. And I'm like, okay, you all want to end our season. And then I came up and said, since you want to end our season, we're going to end your season. We're going to beat you. I said we'll beat you if you think you can end our season. And then yeah. you said, oh, it's not happened before. And I said last year, did I beat you or not? And you and you can't and that's what I'm asking. Did I and beat and you I, or not last year? Chelsea, did I beat Chelsea? Did I beat you or not last year? Good. Yeah, so yeah, let's yeah. just leave the story for yeah, thirty. Okay. Just, nice. just oh, oh, oh. earlier. Um, stop oh, stop moonwalking. Uh, stop moonwalking fear? around the conversation. Well, what I said earlier about fear and Arsenal, why I don't fear Arsenal, is because no matter what, ever since I was a kid, I'm I'm twenty. I'm about to be twenty-four. I've been watching football since maybe oh four or five times. Since I've started watching football, every time it touches March, end of March, April. Your season capitulates. I don't trust you guys. I don't fear you guys. I don't Agreed. really believe you're going to do anything. Until you guys prove me wrong, I've got 20 years of evidence to back it up. I don't fear you. And when we run into you guys, I promise you, we'll get like... Oh, listen, I, know, it's I hear you, CB. See, sorry, Dale, I was going to go to... Because Rory was going to say something a minute ago. Rory, oh, what, oh, what, Rory. what are you going to say to this? Um, I just don't think Spurs are going to have an impact on the title race at all. I think all three of us batter them. That's the only. They, 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 there's been this big thing about oh, Spurs will get to play all three. They're going to decide. I think they get battered by all three of us. Um, but I still, I still you don't think that's the way so far this season. And most of those games are away. But I'm just saying. No, that's fine. So we're going to battle you this time. Uh, we've all learned, we've all learned the, the Ange way that doesn't change. And uh, and you'll get a hand to you. So I actually think if Arsenal do, Arsenal do have the di most difficult run of games. But if we do drop points, it won't be against Spurs or Chelsea. I don't think it'll end up being against. It'll be like Wolves away. 
or Villa. You'd home. still be bottling it. You'd well, be bottling it against the Spurs. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe at the Etihad, yeah. <laughs> maybe at the Etihad, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, why you know are you saying that? I, need, when I you... need Arsenal versus City Champions League semi final. I need City to get past Real Madrid. I, I need Arsenal to get, get past that. Bayern and semi finals yeah. against each other right in the running. I, I get that. Rory, I just want to pick on something you said. When you said that like people have worked out and ball, is, do you think that's what it is this time round after it's sort of almost a full season? The Peps, the Artetas, and the Klops will know how to hurt them. Yeah, I think so. To an extent, it happened to Arsenal last season. We the first half of the season we had this fresh way of playing. It was electric. No one could stop it. Second half of the season, gradually teams had figured it out. And I think Arteta was more flexible than Angie's. I think the way yeah, you know, Fulham figured it out. They're, Put three past them and had a bad game. Because they didn't figure us out. We had a really. But bad when game. was the last time you had a really good game? Um, let me remember my fixtures now. You caught me. Out. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just, you, you just caught me. No, you just caught me out. Oh, bad time. Oh, I don't remember my last. No. Oh, we, we, no, we. we I'm telling you, 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 you got found out a while ago. No, I didn't even can't remember my last. Fixture. I'm asking the fixtures up. Uh, Hang on a minute, George, George, over, over to you. We're putting George up here. Come on, let us know, George. <laughs> let me see Tottenham's last fixtures. I, I can't Oof. remember. My, my, my memory is shit, man. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I'd remember a very good win. Yes, you did. Wait, this win, is but... silly now. Did we not just pump? No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Now I know you're just waffling, Rory. Did we yeah, not just pump in a 4 0 the prior? Yeah. Like, literally two weeks ago. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what to do here. We Like, that, that, was, our, that was a really good yeah. performance. Well, Villa capitulated, and also that was that was almost that was that was the the coming together of two managers that uh that, that play a reckless way, and once one of them's down to ten, but before that Villa game, it was poor. Then you had the Villa game, and then and then Fulham was poor. So it's oh. um yeah, I, I think you've been found out. Okay, personally, mm. interesting, Smithers. That, yeah, Arsenal definitely got the hardest running as per, as per that question, but um I think. That all change the, the thing with Arsenal having the hardest running. That's because they go away to City, and that's the next game. So get a positive result there, and I think maybe everybody's mind changes again because you know if they get a win there, then everyone tra- they lose there, it changes. So it's I mean it would be it would be sort of old school typical Arsenal to beat um, City away, but then go and drop points to Chelsea or Spurs with the seasons they're having in comparison and lose it. It'd be crazy if you did. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with that one. Some super chats here. First one says uh, that uh, that first Dio humbling is going to hit like crack, is what uh, Staffy says here. <laughs> You're That's on it. mute, brother. Oh, sorry. Am I still on mute? Can you hear me? You can hear now. Yeah, yeah. Staffy, they started it now. Yeah, we will see. We're going to end your season, and then Jordy to jump in. We're going to, and I'm like, what are you talking about? I told you this weeks no, no, ago. You see, I'm answering Staffy. I'm responding to Staffy now. Um, Tottenham, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. I'm talking to Staffy. The same energy. This your... is what I don't oh. like about guys. That I've seen. I've seen you plenty of times. Now I've seen guys like you. They come with all the chest. They they say everything that sounds nice, and then once you fall apart, you disappear. Literally, don't hear from you. You don't come Staff, out with Staffy. I, so Staffy, I can't me, respond to you because he's not allowing me speak. I can't respond because it's not allowing me to speak. So, Staffy, they started it and I had to give them back the same energy and smoke. Do you understand? So, that's the reason. There's no humbling anywhere. Football is a game where your team wins or your team loses. And the the way my team is playing right now, I can back them because they're playing well. Simple. That's all I can tell you. You can't say the same for your team. You lost one, one, one very well. You lost another one to Fulham. I've had wins back to back and I've had tough wins that I've had to go in tough, find a way to win and win. So for me, it's like, look, I can look at my team and say, we can win in multiple ways. We can find a way to win in multiple ways. You can't say the same for your team. Your one-track football, your high high, high line or hairline football that Ange likes to play, the one that goes all the way back, you'll figure it out now. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Winter Surface is talking about ending a season shameless. And he also says a Chelsea fan propping uh, Gallopuk, um says it all, uh, is what Winter Surface says. Kenny here says this run is going to be amazing for the n- next year. Don't know what that means. Maybe I'm being dumb. I get it. But thank you for the super chat. A lot, I want to thank everyone that has tuned in this evening. Um, considering it's international break, crazy numbers, amazing super chats, crazy number likes as well. Make sure you give them a hit. Panel, 
always fantastic to sit here and talk football uh, with each and every single one of you. We're back tomorrow. Some content in the morning. Um, we're early with Hussam and Staffy tomorrow um, due to the commitments they both have. I think it's going to be about, about 1.30. I'm waiting for them to. They're, they're working the timeout. I'm just working around them. So straight facts tomorrow with Staffy and Hussam. Until next time, everybody, look after yourselves. Take care. Goodbye. God bless. And I'll see you all again soon. Peace.